Good evening and welcome to the Ball Game Blitz TV show produced by Worthy Road Studios on the USJ High School Facebook page. I'm Seabass, your announcer for this evening, and Chuck Walker will be the color announcer for USJ broadcast this football season. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, editing, or further use of this Ball Game Blitz TV show without the written consent of Worthy Road Studios is strictly prohibited. Other high schools covered by Ball Game Blitz TV show are Jackson Christian, TCA, and Trenton Peabody. And those those games are broadcast to each high school's Facebook page. We also broadcast all Union University home games for volleyball, basketball, soccer, softball, and baseball. All of our ball game blitz games are archived to the Worthy Road Studios YouTube channel. Again, I'm Seabass, and I'll be your play-by-play -play announcer for USJ this year in the Ball Game Blitz show on the USJ High School Facebook page. Our director tonight is Paul Schulze. Paul Schultz is also our replay operator and producer. Cameras tonight are Eric Inman and Stephen Childress. Our executive producer for all of our schools and other sports in these events is Paul Schultz. Please support our advertisers who help make Worthy Road Studios TV show Ball Game Blitz broadcast the high quality that they are. Without these advertisements, there would be no crews to bring you these broadcasts. Our advertisers, replay sponsor, Carlock Nissan. Pre-game sponsor, Brooksy's Barn. The quarter logo sponsors are Mitchell's Body Shop, Jones Chevrolet, and the Blacksmith Restaurant. Scoreboard sponsor is Thompson & Smith Insurance. Touchdown sponsor is Garrett Plumbing and Heating. And our first down sponsors are Thompson & Smith Insurance. Other advertisers are Aloha Pools, Southeastern Termite and Pest Control, Elite Dental, McCoy's Heating and Air, Alive Hydration, and Spa, Lifeline Blood Services, Kaufman's Furnishings and Home Appliances, Arrington Funeral Directors, Bank of Jackson, King Jewelers, Nest Realty, and Lifestyle Visions. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight marks the fifth game of the season, the halfway point for your USJ Bruins. Don't forget you're listening to this game also on Jackson's News Talk 101.5 FM, and you can also watch that at WNWS.com. Also on that end, producing tonight, Bryce Mott, who did a great job with the pregame show show he'll have the post game as soon as this one has gone final so from the press box here on the campus of first assembly christian school in cordova tennessee you are listening to usj football joining me tonight in the studio my color commentator best in the business the one and only chuck walker chuck good evening my friend i'll also be joining you in the press box because i can be two places at once it's very good to see you how have you been Get out is the yeah, first thing. Fine, I think fine. I said studio. You did, did I? but I knew what you mean. This is like a studio. I'd like to say this. This is the first press box we've been in all year with air conditioning. This is phenomenal. It does feel good in here. It feels uh, well, real good. I will good. not lie. It feels good on the legs, too. Holy yeah, smoke. I'm glad I wore shorts tonight. Me. We have a beautiful night. Look at this backdrop, Chuck. This mm -hmm. is a beautiful campus. Uh, they moved here, I guess, maybe about 10, 15 years ago. They were they used to play in, in a little carved-out hollow uh, little meadow in the woods right off of Summer Avenue by Poplar. I mean, if you didn't know that it was there, you would have a hard time finding it. Uh, but thing, and the school was located on high. Uh, and now they've moved out to Cordova, and they have this masterpiece. It's this beautiful place nestled right here in, in busy Cordova, and it just seems to be you got a big old line of trees, and it's away from everything else. The Crusaders not having one of their better years. So I've talked to some of the folks here. It's a rebuild for the Crusaders, and if you're rebuilding, I think the last team you want to face right now are these USJ Bruins. Your Bruins last week, seven days ago, pulled off, let's, let's just call it what it is, Chuck, a major upset, knocking off state ranked for a Hardin County. The, the Tigers came to town. Coach Matthew Smith and the Tigers prohibited favorites in that game. They walked out with an L. The Bruins had their best performance of the season, 24-17. to 17. And if some may ask, okay, you're clearly better than your opponent tonight, but you've had everything, put everything in that game last week, which was not a region game, but you put everything into that. Any reason to believe that maybe there's a little bit of a hangover over against a team that you know you should beat and probably soundly? I don't think so. I think they'll be ready to play. Now, what we saw last week lets you know that just about anything could happen uh, on any given Friday Friday night in high school football. Uh, but but USJ looked good. Um, everything that everything that maybe didn't click uh, in Union City week two uh, clicked Friday night, last Friday night, seven short days ago, and and this team has really 
you know, e even that loss against Union City, that's a heck of a Union City program. They're going to give 1A, single A, uh, a really hard time, uh, especially in West Tennessee. I think they're probably the best single A team. So Union City stout, but USJ looks like they have fixed uh, whatever was ailing them. So, no, I expect them to ride this this high. I mean, especially your linebackers, guys like Brooks Jones, uh, Parker Barnes out there, these high-intensity, high-emotional guys. Usually guys like that don't let you get too down. They're not going to let you look over, overlook too much because they're ready to play. They were ready to play. They were knocking helmets week one against Liberty, who they were also much better than. They were going hard that game. So I don't, I don't expect any letdowns here. I don't either. And, and, and in a few minutes, we'll take a look at some highlights from last week's victorious game over Hardin County. Some great highlights. And we'll do that in just a few minutes. But a couple of players that really stuck out last week, let's talk about those. Obviously, Jace Barksdale, the junior wide receiver slash DB slash special teams dynamo, has really carved a name for himself in the, in the first half of his junior season. Really a do-it-all player for these Bruins. And, and last week was no different. You know, the thing that surprised that, – that's not right. Surprise isn't the right word. The thing I was most impressed with, because we know he is unbelievable on special teams. We know that if he gets the ball in space uh, as a receiver, he can go and he can do whatever he wants. Uh, that catch that he made, I mean, that's – the fact that that wasn't on Sports Center's top ten it just blows <laughs> it my was mind. Yeah, he got it was it was unbelievable. But man, the coverage that he put on it because that's they took Hardin County's passing game completely away from them. That's what Hardin County wanted to do, and 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 they really never could find um, and, and not just Jace Barksdale. All the de these defensive backs uh, really let the the second line of the defense work. But I was extremely impressed with Jace's coverage last week, as well as everybody else's, by the way. But just you know, highlighting Jace there and talking about him. I mean, he he had them snuffed out all the time, and they and they kept trying to work the ball. Was it number one? Uh, it was I forget the number now uh, for Hardin County. They kept trying to get him the ball, and Jace was between five. Him. You, you, you five. Number, it was number, number five. five. Yeah, yeah. And Jason's tweeted every single time. Yeah, no doubt. And and and, and uh, I give credit. They, Hardin County didn't back away from that. They kept on trying, but every time number eight rose to the occasion. What a game he had! But he wasn't alone. Some other players. Let's talk about it. You know, senior running back Kevin Fitch continues uh, to carve a name out for himself. You know, Steel Haynes was so good last year when he went down. Finch was the one that stepped in, but now this is his backfield, and he has really gotten better to me every single game. Uh, you know, he he has literally uh, taken his game to another level. It's not just the moves. It's not just the speed, the field vision. It's the power that this young man runs with runs with he gives this team a real option in the running game and listen if that's what if they're going to go far they're going to have to have that Kevin Finch has been such a huge part of this football team yeah Kevin Finch like you said definitely gets better week after week I was so impressed that was a coming out party for him letting every every you know D2 single A school know that look yeah you you can put what you want to on eight you can do what you need to do uh but but I'm here too and I've got to be accounted for and he ran so hard. How many times did we say, hey, we're just about to make the call. He's brought down. And, and he just kept going another four yards, three yards. He busted one of those. We're about to see in a highlight play here in just a couple of minutes. But, yeah, Finch, welcome to the big time, the prime time. Everybody remember number 31. And one more thing, and we're going to take a break, and we'll come back with those highlights from last week uh, and that 24-17 win over Hardin County. But we, we have to mention Berkeley Pettigrew. Uh, he's been so consistent all season long. The leader of this offense, Berkeley Berkeley Pettigrew, the senior quarterback, 6'1", 180, uh, true leader on this football team, consistent, not turning the ball over, and handling this offense and managing this offense fantastically here as we get to the halfway point of this season. Yeah, and some of his decisions, some of his best decisions last week were when he didn't throw it. Obviously, that touch pass to the, the back of the end zone to Jace Barksdale is the one that everybody remembers. You're going to remember that for a long, long time. It'll go down in the annals of, of Bruin lore. But, you know, he kept the ball and ran the ball successfully. That's a dimension of him we haven't seen a ton this season. We, you know he's got it, but he moves around so well. And that good decision-making, you know, in the RPOs or whatever, whatever it is you want to call it at the, at the high school level, that kind of decision-making from a smart quarterback, I'm telling you, this team right here is going to give you fits. That defense plays has played lights out all season long, but that offense clicked and clicked and clicked some more last week. About 18 minutes away from kickoff. We'll take this break. When we come back, we'll have highlights from that huge win for the Bruins over Hardin County last week. You're listening to USJ Football on Worthy Road Studios. Wow. 
championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way, a full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at Jones Chevrolet Humboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state of the art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. And welcome back to the campus here on the facilities of First Assembly Christian School, home of the Crusaders, as we're just about 15 minutes away from kickoff of your USJ Bruins in a region matchup, 3-1 and one on the season, taking on the 2-2 two and two FACS Crusaders. Now, let's take a look at some of the highlights from that amazing win last week with Hardin County and your USJ Bruins. As we begin these highlights, here is Berkeley Pettigrew hitting the one and only Jace, and he is gone. No, he's not gone. This was not a touch that he was caught from behind the turf monster. Got him on this one, if you remember, Chuck. He was on the way. Barksdale tripped up around the 10-yard line, got his feet tangled up with the turf. But you can see, hit that quick slant from the left slot. Boom, unchecked, makes the catch. Ber uh, Berkeley Pettigrew finds him, and he just outruns four Tiger defenders. And then that old turf monster trips up and gets him and actually went down about the 15. Did a huge job of flipping the field there. USJ, we did go on to score, but worst case scenario, would have flipped the field. So Pettigrew here rolled to his left, looking in the catch of the year in the back of the end zone. A one-handed snag by Berkeley, uh, by Jace Barksdale, one of the best catches you will ever see on the high school level. And you get another look at this one if you're watching on Worthy Road Studios. Look at this beautiful play. Great job. Offensive line blocking. Pettigrew rolling, looking for his man. Floats over the Defender keeps his foot inbounds, makes the catch for the play of the year. Moving on here defensively, trying to hit that wheel route, and it was intercepted by USJ. What That's a play that was. Brooks it was Jones. a house call for senior linebacker Brooks Jones. Took it back to the house for the Bruins, and they struck once again. And it was just a beautiful play. Great recognition by Brooks Jones on this one. You see right out of the hitch. Get, bring the guy on the slant, get the wheel, and look at that. Never even flinched. That's the linebacker dropping out in the you coverage got that there. Right. An unbelievable coverage. That, and then once he had the ball, he knew what to do. That's with called it. great scouting right there. That is somebody who knew what play was coming on to the next highlight. It was senior running back Kevin Finch down the right sideline. You'll see him accelerate. 
and finally taken down about the 23-yard line. But he shows speed along with that great strength and hard running that he's shown all year long. The running game was working last week and has been really all year for the Bruins. We'll give you another look at it. Look at that offensive line doing a great job. Everybody, hat on a hat. And, man, what a lane they created for Kevin Finch. He did the rest all the way down inside that 25-yard line. We'll move along. And Berkeley Pettigrew was from the gun. It was a swing pass to Kevin Finch in the left side flat. He got a couple of different blocks and got all the way down to about, what do you say, about the one-inch line. They put it right there on the goal line, and it set up the Bruins for a first and goal from look, there. Look at the block that uh, tied in. Uh, uh Riley Sills makes on this play right here, setting it up, open the Finch up for the score right here. One guy to beat, lays the lumber hard, yeah, and there goes Finch. Uh, look at Riley Sills. He was looking for somebody to get, and and really only needed to get in their way, but did even more. So here at from the goal line, it's Kevin Finch running behind the big nasties into the end zone, and the Bruins were on the board once again. Running game, passing game, everything working for the USJ Bruins last week. Man, look at this. This is called this big man on on big man. That's all that is. Fire out, get your man, and get a football's length worth, and Kevin Fitz got that and much more. I guess a very big Hardin County defensive line. What a job that O-line did all night long. And look at the Bruins here. Ty O'Neill all night long in that backfield against Hardin County's massive offensive line, but he's been playing big all year long from the right side of that Bruin defense. Look at it, just fighting through players and taking them down. He's been maybe the best defensive player on this team all year. I wouldn't argue that at all. Ty had an unbelievable week last week. Bruins get the ball back on offense. Berkeley Pettigrew was rolling, rolling, rolling to his, looking for his men. Found Jace Barksdale about the 40. And look at Barksdale after the catch, what he does. So electric. But that was all about the patience of Berkeley Pettigrew and baiting that defender in. He waited. And the defender was in no man's land. I've got a guy I've got to hold. And then i got a quarterback who's rolling out to his left. Look at this. you got this your defensive back. Now, what do you do? What do I do? I'm going to go after the quarterback. Oh, my goodness. There's Jace Barksdale, and Pettigrew was perfect with it. He was patient, flipped it over the top of the defender, and off they went. Now Bruins looking to strike once again inside that Hardin County 30-yard line. It was Pettigrew from the gun. He gave it to Finch off of right tackle, kicked it out, got a great block by uh, Sane, who's been doing that all season long all the way inside the five-yard line. The receivers on this football team have done an amazing job. Look at look at Sane, Evan Sane from that right hash. You're sitting here looking there and just locks on to that defensive back. Look at that. Just stays in the way, but doesn't give up right there. It goes, you see him, and Davis Sane with a beautiful block, and that was another great play, one of many from last week's 24-17 to win. But it's time to move forward. This game is far more important than last week's game, not because it's the next game. Yes, that's true, but because, Chuck, this is a region game. And, oh, by the way, there's another big game coming up next week. I think you know the language I'm speaking. Yeah. Now, next Friday, I will be in the studios of Jackson's News Talk 101.5 FM doing a little red zone because we play on Thursday night next week, and we want all of Bruin Nation at Kirkland Field because, guys, it's on. <laughs> I don't know how else to put it, but it is flat on. Jackson Christian comes to town next week. They're undefeated. They had one game that was a, a no contest because the game because of lightning ended up not played. That was up at Columbia Academy. Um, all I can tell you is get there early. The Eagles, the Bruins. This is always a huge game for these two. This may be the biggest matchup between these two that I've seen in 20 years, and I don't think I'm overstating that. I, I, I don't know. I mean, there was a year. Didn't Jackson Christian win the state championship they did. when they were in the uh, they public did. school but division? But both of these teams are playing elite football right now. You have one Jackson Christian team who goes out and smokes ECS by 49 last week. And the Bruins, while they're all doing that, the Bruins are over here upsetting a top 10 4A team in the state, 24 to 17. The stage is set. If you win this game, let's just call it like it is. If you win this game, you're going to win the region. Right. The region is going to be yours. This is about a region title. This is about seeding. And I understand it might be at the halfway point, but you're going to take the Bruins and Jackson Christian against everybody else they play in this region. It's about next week. It's about next Thursday. Now, you have to handle business. USJ decided favorites tonight here in Cordova, and Jackson Christian decided favorites against a winless Harding Academy team, a team that, that FACS has already handled on the season. 
Yeah, this game setting up for Thursday. Assuming you know, assuming when we get there and everybody gets through this unscathed, which we, they, we think they will, both teams shouldn't have a problem. It, it, and it's awesome that it's on a Thursday night too because that means everybody, every other coach, you know what I mean, they're going to be there. It's like you said, I'm glad we've got a spot in the press box. Uh, you know, feel free to put some air in there, by the way. I'm, I'm loving this right now. I never want to leave. Uh, <laughs> but, yes, uh, we've got a spot in the press box. It's going to be on that student section, both student sections. Can you imagine how much these, how much fun these kids are going to have? They're separated only by a few miles, but social media brings us oh so close. Can you imagine the, the talk that's going to go back and forth this, this week at school? Oh, absolutely. We're going to take this break for and make way for the national anthem. We'll get that and come back on the other side. You're listening to Bruin Football on Worthy Road Studios. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options too with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories. Outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's for your life. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre-owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. We're about four minutes away from the start of this football game. Your captains tonight for the home team. First Assembly Christian School, number six, quarterback Josh Wright. Number nine, Jacoby Moore. Number 22, Jake Pennington. And number 73, Caden Hartunian, the offensive lineman. And, of course, across the way, and we'll be going out there, by the way, for the coin toss here in just a second. Your captains for your USJ Bruins, of course, your quarterback, number 18. Berkeley Pettigrew having a whale of a season. Also, number 62 for the USJ Bruins, one of those outstanding linemen, Mark Cox. And, is, and by the way, I'll tell you just, uh, an injury here in just a second. But number 31, Kevin Finch is your other captain. Now we have another, one of the captains is in a sling, and I'm not sure who that is. So if we get a jersey number on there. Yeah, he's well, not wearing a jersey. Well, he does have his jersey does he? on. Yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't see it. Yeah, it's right, oh, I see it right, right now. There. Yeah. yeah Is that but number four? But he's in a sling, so if we can get that, uh, that number no, here in no, just no. a second, we will. But we're here, and if you're seeing this right here, you can, see, you can hear the audio from the coin toss. The Bruins are going to get the opportunity to call it. Now, every time the Bruins have taken the football, so we're here. Here's the toss. USJ has won the toss. 
and we'll see if tradition has, holds. They've wanted the football all year long, and no different, Chuck. They want to put that Bruin offense on the field first. The Bruins won the coin toss, and they're going to start with the football tonight. Yeah, don't. Don't doubt, don't not uh, what am I trying to say? Don't mind that call at all. Yeah, you're right. It's worked all season long for the Bruins. Yeah, I'm excited to see this offense get back on the field because as you remember last week, huge win. I don't believe there were any points for the Bruins in the second half. They did all of their work and all that it took in the first half. Okay, so we have that the, the other captain for you, and it's a big loss. Yeah. It's a big loss for the Bruins. Don't know the extent of the injury, but that's Parker Barnes. Oh, no. In, in the sling. Parker yeah. Barnes uh, has been a huge part of this team, especially on defense. That's where he's uh, made his money on defense. He has that right shoulder in a sling. We'll see if we can find out the extent of that, but Parker Barnes clearly will not be playing in this football game tonight. That's not great for the Bruins, but they should still be decided uh, favorites in this football game. How you see this one turning out? 3-1 and one USJ, 2-2 two and two FACS. Yeah, I don't think the Bruins have a lot of trouble here tonight. I'm looking at a 49-6 to six score for the Bruins. And again, talking with the people here at FACS, this is a rebuild for them. They have a second-year head coach, and they're still trying to figure things out here for the Crusaders. Again, they have two wins on the season. They are 500. Uh, last week, they were hand they had it handed to them by Halls, the Tigers. Now, that appears to be no shame this year because Halls, Halls beat three everybody. and one on the season. By the way, Halls is taking on West Carroll tonight. Uh, West Carroll West undefeated Carroll's on like, the yeah, season. But say, yeah, but they're playing great. That could be a pretty good football game. Speaking of pretty good football games, there's a game being played at Johnny Hale Stadium tonight in Milan, Tennessee, that's also getting ready to kick off that features the Purple Puppies, the Bulldogs taking on the Haywood County Tomcats. Who do you have in that one? I, I said I made a mistake last week, and I said that Crockett County was going to shock the world 31-30 to and beat Haywood. What I meant to say is Milan was going to shock the world and beat Haywood. 31-30, Bulldogs. And I, I, I think I think it's I think it's a close one. I have more Boy, customers in Milan. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's how I make now, all my picks. We're, now, I, we're now, having the most now customers. That's funny. That that is funny. Back deep for the Bruins. Let's get those numbers. Of course, Jace Barksdale back the deepest. Kicking for the Crusaders is junior David Baker. And they said, we have this wrong. Both teams are on the wrong side of the field. We got a flip-flop. Uh, FACS wanted to defend this goal, so we'll go back the other way. So just a, the slightest of delays, if you will, but we are just about to get this bad boy underway. Yeah, what a beautiful night. You know, it's going to be pretty warm next week, but right now this is wonderful weather. You can have your short britches on and still feel good. I love it. Aaron Tunstall also back for the Bruins. We just about ready to play some high school football, y'all. Let's get it on, baby. Worthy Road Studio. Seabass Chuck Walker on the call for this one. Don't forget you can listen to this game at WNWS.com. You can listen and watch it there. And, of course, listen on the radio at 101.5. Bryce Mott with the post-game show after this one is all over with. So, no more talking. It's time to get it done. Baker swings that right foot. It's an onside kick that takes about, goes to pre-required distance, and FACS falls on that football. That's going to be Charlie Goss, the freshman. USJ not ready for that one, and a big break. I say it's not a big break. That's a great execution for the Crusaders, and just like that, the Crusaders start the football with a Big, big play. They start this game on the Bruin 40-yard line. Yeah, what a great break there they made by it. And USJ was definitely taken aback. And that's what you got to do if you're FACS. you got to get some onside kicks. Reminds me of a Super Bowl I watched one time with the Saints and the Colts in there. Uh, Sean Payton coming out the second half. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, I do remember that one. So here we go from the eye. Single wide receivers to each side. That is quarterback Josh Wright, the junior under center. Crusaders with the initial possession of this game. Here's a handoff off right tackle, bouncing out and taken down for about a two-yard loss to give them forward momentum. And it'll be, we'll call it second and 11. That was Jake Pennington on the carry, but the left side of that Bruin defense just swarmed him. Yeah, Christian Melton came in here and made initial contact early and drug him back another six or seven yards. They will give him forward progress, but that was a great, great pursuit there and tackle by, by Melton. Yeah, swarming defense has been the calling card of this Bruin defense all season long. That's a digital uh, uh, sign out there for the down marker. I like that. Either that or it's the brightest color I've, I've ever seen. That's amazing. Yeah. They all need to be that way. I like that. Can't hide money. Here we go. Second <laughs> and 11 from the Bruin 41-yard line. Right under center. 
Again, backs in the eye, two wide receivers in a bunch formation. Now dropping straight back under pressure, right, rolling to his right, looking, looking, needs a block. Now just throws the ball out of bounds. Great coverage downfield. Nobody to go to. A lot of pressure, forced that ball. Now it's going to be third and long for the Crusaders from the Bruin 41-yard line. Yeah, you can tell Jones was looking for shields down the field. Jace Barksdale, I believe, there uh, on the coverage has him wrapped up. He rolls it out as far as he can and wisely throws the ball out of bounds there. But great, another great uh, secondary coverage by the Bruins. Yeah, Josh Wright, just a junior. Did I say Jones? Yep. I didn't mean to. I, just, I, I made it up. going to say a thing. It was, it was close enough. <laughs> third and 11 for the Crusaders. Twins to the left, backs in the eye, under center. Now checks with the sideline. Right looks at that wristband. Now back down, under center once again. Seven seconds on the play clock. Here's the snap. Play action, rolling to his left. Now dips it down to the 40 in the flat. He is taken off his feet about the 34-yard line with a great tackle by Brooks Jones. That's going to leave it about three or four yards. We'll take three yards short. He'll knock it out at the 33-yard line. That's going to be fourth and three for the Crusaders. And it's really in no man's land, so you got to figure that the Crusaders will go for it here. Yeah, really nice play call here for FACS. Jones coming and, and making a hard hit. To, to get him down. And, yeah, we are about four yards short, so they will go for it. All right. First biggest play of the game so far. I know it's early on, but here we go. Fourth and three for the Crusaders from the Bruin 33-yard line. Eight in the box for the Bruins. It's a give off right tackle. Nothing doing. He keeps those feet moving, but it's not nearly enough. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage on that one. Yeah, Brooks Jones got in there right at the line, moved that pile back. I had a feeling he was going to play with a lot of intensity tonight, you know, like he's been playing all, all year up to this point, and especially with his partner, his tag team champ of the world, Parker Barnes, being out tonight. Brooks is stepping up and in on the last two plays. Absolutely. So no harm, no foul for the Bruins after giving up the onside kick. The Bruins will take over for... First and 10 from the Crusader 30, or excuse me, from their own 35-yard line. Three wide receiver set, twins to the left. Finch, swing pass to the left flat, has a man, has a block, still going, cuts up, spins around, driving his feet all the way just shy of the 45-yard line. They'll spot him at the 44. That's a good for a pickup of nine yards on first down, setting up second and one for USJ. Yeah, Pettigrew knew exactly what he was going to get with the ball here on the swing pass. Finch, you know, rolls out there into the flat, and he's got it, and there's, look at the blocking oh, yeah. downfield. The offensive lineman. I mean, such just a great job. moving down there. This, I mean, he's got seven yards before he's touched. Pettigrew from the gun, Finch to his right. Here's the snap. Play action, looking for the slant, tipped. Trying to find Davis Sane and give a lot of credit to senior Caden Hartunian, the defensive lineman who stepped back in coverage from the defensive line. You don't see that very often. And Pettigrew didn't see him. Nice job because the slant to, to uh, Sane was there. Would have been more than enough for the first down. Now setting up third and one for the Bruins from their own 44-yard line. Four wide receiver set, twins to each side. Finch in the backfield. Here's the snap. The give to Finch off left tackle has a first down and more. He'll pick up the first all the way up to about the 49-yard line, a yard short of midfield, and that is good enough for your first. Thompson and Smith, first down of the evening. Yeah, Finch doing a good job working his way to the outside there. And I'll tell you, Bass, I see why I got confused and you got confused there. Number 73, you don't see a lot of linebackers uh, with number 73 on, but he's actually a linebacker. He, he came from the, the yeah. linebacker. said, so, okay. Well, yeah, I would make that mistake every time. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. You got number zero. I don't on know the that line. I've ever seen it, to yeah. be honest with you. All right, Bruins, first and 10 from their own 48 yard line. Here's the snap to give the Finch straight up the middle. He has a lane. He could go. It's a foot race. 40, 30, 20, 10. Forget about it. That is a touchdown. Make, sure, make that a Garrett plumbing and heating touchdown. 52 yards for Kevin Finch, and with 8.56 left to go in this first quarter, the Bruins have drawn first blood. Yeah, Finch has done so much damage all year long, running up that A gap, that B gap, right there, up the middle. He's been so strong and powerful. That's where he's done the bulk of his damage. Just about untouched. Great job, the interior of that Bruin offensive line, creating the hole, and Finch does the rest. Now English in for the extra point. It's up, and it is good. Your new score with 8.56 left to go here in the first quarter, USJ 7 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios.
can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Welcome back. Let's take a look once again at the touchdown. 52 yards from Kevin Finch. Here's your replay. Look at that offensive line. Look at that kick out block by one of the receivers. Actually, that's Raleigh Seals, and it's a foot race, and nobody's catching Kevin Finch. 52 yards later, the Bruins are on the board. Yeah, and center George Allen there really just moved his man off the ball. I mean, you had a six-yard hole you could run through there if you're Finch, and that man doesn't need a lot of opportunity. All he needs is a chance. The O-line, and you mentioned Raleigh Seals as well. What a great job on that on. Actually, it was their first drive because they never actually got the football. That was their initial drive. So with just under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter, Bruins lead 7 to nothing, and we'll be kicking off for the first time this evening. English swinging that right foot. It's a high kick that's actually going to hit at the 22-yard line, taken right there, breaks a tackle, has a seam on the right side, on the left sideline, and now taken out of bounds just shy of the 35-yard line. That was a very dangerous dangerous kick that time and, and I'm surprised that FACS let that ball I'm surprised they let it hit the ground they could have come up and caught it it took a favorable bounce was high and number one for the uh, Crusaders Brian Shields picks it up and makes something out of nothing they get it to the 35 yard line but the Bruins nearly got that kickoff yeah Bruins junior Aaron Tunstall was there number 16 to, to make that I thought he was going to hit him hard enough where the ball would come loose and maybe OJ had a chance there but all for not 35 yard line for FACS. So Josh Wright and this Crusader offense with their second possession from their own 35-yard line. Here's a gift to Pennington off left tackle, and he will never make it to the line of scrimmage as he is absolutely swallowed up by a ton of USJ Bruins, including number seven, Sam McMillan, who's had a great couple of weeks. Man, he's really played well. Yeah, McMillan comes up here now, and you know what I'm noticing tonight? First contact is the last contact, right? You know, haven't seen any of the Knights run through a tackle yet, but give credit to USJ. They're wrapping up hard and driving back. Yeah, Christian Melton also did a great job of forcing that play as well in the backfield. They'll give him forward progress, say just shy of the line of scrimmage, but it'll still be second and 10 for the Crusaders from their own 35-yard line. Single wide receiver set to each side. Pennington in the backfield. Here's Wright. A gift to Pennington off a right tackle, and he'll lose yardage once again. USJ's defensive line is absolutely swallowing up this Crusader offensive line. There's just nowhere for Pennington to run. Yeah, Maddox Rayburn and Ty O'Neill both in there on the tackle. And those are both big men coming after you. It's not what you want to see if you're the quarterback. You're just running for your life right now. Yeah, simple 3-4 set, uh, but just literally – Five or six, five or six different defenders that Pennington's having to navigate in the backfield. Each each handoff. That's going to set up. What is it? A loss of two? Does that look like? Yeah, yeah it's like loss third of and two. twelve. It's going to be third and twelve for the Crusaders from their own thirty-three yard line. Twins to the left. Right will go from under center. Here's the snap. Rolling to his left, looking out in the flat, has his man, and it is caught. Breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle. He'll get the first down and finally taken down after a nice gain of 18 yards up to their own 49-yard line. That's Brian Shields. So far, he's been the favorite target of Josh Wright. Every time Wright rolls to his left, he's got a couple of men open in this flat, and he throws a bullet. Now, closing in was the Bruins defensive back. Didn't get that number. We'll see if we can. Is that number one? Yeah, that's Will that's Horton. Horton. He just about makes the tackle there. Almost ran too fast. Almost ran himself out of the tackle on that one, but Horton was there, but he was, right, was able to get through for the first. First and ten for the Crusaders, just shy of midfield. Double tight formation for the Crusaders. Backs in the eye. Right under center. Here's a handoff to Pennington trying that right side once again. Bounces out. Just nowhere to go. He'll lose. They'll give him forward momentum, but he'll still lose a yard and a half. You're not going to be able to string anything out on this Bruin, off, or Bruin defense. First of all, they're not nearly fast enough to do that. Uh, play action and bootlegs are the only things that have worked so far, but trying to string things out against this defense simply does not work. And again, leading the charge that time, Christian Melton. Yeah, Melton was right there. A whole host of Bruins. I feel like we're just like picking a number out of a hat, and chances are you're going to be close to right with the tackle there. They'll call it a loss of one, so we'll say second, and a long 11 for the Crusaders just in, right, just shy of their 49-yard line. 5.49 left to go here in the first quarter. Bruins leading 7 to nothing. if you're just tuning in. 
Here's Pennington in the backfield. Twins to the right. Rolling to his right is right. He's looking, looking downfield, looking for a man, and throws it out of bounds. Again, for some reason, they were going for Gavin Morris, by the way, on that one, and he was very well covered by Jace Barksdale. I'm a little confounded. I don't really understand this. They've been the Teams have been trying to go after the one person for certain they don't need to be going after, but they've tr tried to test him all year long. I think Wright just threw that one out of bounds. He saw he didn't have anything there and threw it out of bounds, but he does flash a nice arm for sure. Yeah, he does, and throws has a nice arm on the run and shown some touch on the run, and I got a feeling that, you know, any completions he's going to get tonight – that's where it's going to be. He's going to be on the run. Yeah, you want to keep him in the pocket if you can. He's fairly versatile, and you're right. I totally agree. Does well on the run. Third and long for this Crusader offense for their second possession of the game. Seven across that line of scrimmage. Heavy pressure in the backfield, and nothing doing that time for Brian Shields. They tried to slip through there. If you could have found a crease, he might have had something, but led by a host of defenders, including number 11, Alex, Alex Wallace, and number zero, Raleigh Seals. And really, Alex Wallace has really played well all year long. So no, they'll call it no gain on that one. will be fourth and 11 for the Crusaders from their own 48-yard line, and they'll have to punt. Yeah, this line, these linebackers, they're not giving them anything right now. Unless they can have a rollout play towards the middle of the field, there really hadn't been a lot working for the Knights. Not against his first-team defense. David Baker set to punt. Jace Barksdale standing on his own 20-yard line. Snap. Good snap. The kick away. Low wobbler that will bounce at the 25-yard line. Barksdale stays away from that football wisely. Nice coverage that time by the Crusaders. And the Bruins will begin their second possession of this football game just past the 20-yard line. Yeah, and Jace, I thought he was getting an opportunity there. That's what you come, that's what you pay the price of admission for, is to see him work in special teams. That ball kind of took a weird hop. It's almost like it was it hit and sit for a few minutes. And you know. Barksdale made the right decision. You don't want to bend down and pick that thing up, risk getting hit there, you know, it, you know, coughing it up. Bruins will start the drive. What is that, the 26-yard line, seven? That is going to be no, the young lines. I'm on the wrong 16. side of it. I'm on yeah, the wrong side of the, the 20 16, there. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So here we go, second possession for the Bruins with 438 left to go here in the first quarter. Pettigrew from the gun. Dropping straight back. It's a quick screen along the, the left sideline, complete to Raleigh Seals. He's still going, running people over, and finally taken out of bounds. Let's see where they spot that. It's more than enough for a Thompson and Smith first down. But, boy, you talk about setting up a screen quickly. Yeah, and Raleigh Seals, he was waiting for the contacts. Once he had it, look at him. Look he at got his caravan. first down. Three offensive linemen right there. Perfect release. Raleigh Seals does the rest. He'll take him out up to about the 35-yard line. And the Bruins are in business once again. Yeah, it gives them a lot more room than operating on their own 16 there. Pettigrew from the gun. Three wide receiver set. Here's the snap. Play action. Once Sane on the slant. Just out of his reach. It looked to me, I want to see this on the replay. I don't know if Sane maybe stumbled out of the break from that. That wasn't, wasn't nearly as smooth uh, on, on that delivery. That's a play that has worked for the Bruins. And they really, they really want to get Davis Sane involved more in the passing game. He's done so well. Yeah, that ball just a little high that time, a little hot and high. So second and 10 from their own 35 yard line for Pettigrew in the Bruin offense. From the gun, here's the snap. The give to Finch straight up the middle. He'll fall forward for about a nice five, five and a half yard gain. Again, that offensive line for the Bruins doing an outstanding job. That will set up third down and we'll call it four from the Bruins 41 yard line. Yeah, Bruins line of attack is winning it on both sides of the ball. Uh, really playing good on offense and defense, these lines are. And just moving on back, moving on back and, and creating room for Finch. And you just feel like he's due to bust out another big one. Let's see what the Bruins do here on third down. Twins to the right. Here's the snap out into the flat. Completed to Barksdale, but he cannot break the tackle of Brian Shields. What a job by Brian Shields. As we know, Barksdale is not just slippery. He's also extremely strong. Great open field tackle there. Good job there by, by Shields, for sure. The Bruins, you know, thought about it for a second. It looks like they're going to bring their punt team uh, on here. So, big stand there for the Knights. It's, yeah, it's a region play. I, I get it here. The FACS is not incapable here by any stretch of the imagination. It's a yard short of the first down. So, the Bruins from their own 44-yard line, at least right now, in punt formation. 
plenty of time on the play clock. And that's why you do it. As long as the, I'm not going to make the call, this should be on the Crusaders. It is. It's offsides. It's encroachment, and that means that the Bruins are going to get an automatic first down. You think Strap knew what he was doing right there? Yeah, I think he knew exactly <laughs> what he was doing right there. Good call by, by the coach. And you know what keeps tripping me up? I, I keep looking at the down uh, marker, and it's because it's digital. I think Glowing. it's the playcock, and, and I'm like, go, go, go. <laughs> The 49-yard line is where they'll spot the ball. Bruins just shy of midfield. First and 10 for Pettigrew for this offense. Here's the snap play action. Going for the slant. Got to be a flag here, and it is. It comes all the way from the other side of the field. FACS fans don't like it, but they're dead wrong. That was that was highway robbery right there. Trying to hit that slant once again, and you're going to get pass interference on the Crusaders. There's no question about this call, and that is the call. It'll be a first down for the Bruins inside Crusader territory. You'll see Barksdale on this replay here as he runs into the slant. He couldn't get his hands up. He was being, he's being held You'll See him here on the left hash, little stutter, and then here's the slant. He took one, nearly took one to the house, and that time gets revenge on Brian Shields, picks up the pass interference, and now the Bruins in business once again at the Crusader 36 yard line with 2:40 left to go here in the first quarter, and already leading seven to nothing. Bruins looking for more. Yeah, 20 yards on two plays there, and the Bruins, you know, had to take one snap. Three wide receiver set, same to the short side. That's your right side, Finch. Pet to Pettigrew's left. Want to set up the swing pass. There it is. Got a huge lane. Picks up a block and will be taken down. Let's see if it's enough for the first down. That could have went for even more. That was a great open field tackle that time by number 32, A.J. McKay, the junior linebacker, because Finch in the open field is not easy to bring down. But you'll see they set it up perfectly. The DB goes with Barksdale. There's nobody out there, and Finch does a great job, kicks it out. But that's an outstanding tackle. It's actually Brian Shields along with, the help, with help right there. That's two great open field tackles by Shields. Shields is playing really good for the Knights. He's making all all the tackles. Not a big guy, but tackles hard. And yeah, that was a Thompson and Smith first down. Now Pettigrew going for the home run to, to Barksdale at the five and into the end zone. Touchdown. Jace Barksdale beats his defender one-on-one -on -one coverage along that right hash. And we have ourselves a Garrett plumbing and heating touchdown from Berkeley Pettigrew to Jace Barksdale for 29 yards, caught it at the five-yard line and into the end zone. Perfect pass there by Pettigrew right to Barksdale. No one was catching him. All kinds of time. English up for the extra point. It's up, and it is good as well. So at 2.11 to go here in the first quarter, your new score, USJ14 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all prearranged funerals. So you may have prearranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all prearranged funerals because we're here to serve families. So here's a replay of the touchdown. It was actually 26 yards. Great job by the offensive line. Pettigrew gets the snap, throws a beautiful pass down the seam, straight into the hands of Barksdale and the Bruins. Strike gold once again. Two possessions, Chuck, two touchdowns. USJ is cooking now. That offense really going good there with Finch. They've had that swing pass, but Pettigrew showed a ton of touch there to Barksdale. Beautiful pass. So dangerous is this Bruin offense on the ground and through the air. Here's a kickoff that will go into the end zone, hit at the three, and bounce into the end zone. Nice job that time by Drew English, the freshman kicker for the USJ Bruins. Yeah, English has looked really impressive all year long. I like him. The line's kind of coming into his own here. I expect a touchback before the evening's over. Like the one they just, just had? Just now, yeah. <laughs> like the one that they just had. All right, first and 10 for the Crusaders. They're trailing 14 to nothing to USJ, and really they can't afford to go down any further here, as, as dangerous as this Bruin team is offensively. 
And I, I don't want to call FACS challenge. They can move the football. I mean, I don't know that they're going to be able to run the football. They've had a couple of first downs, but but they they are not incapable. So we'll see what happens on the third down or the third drive for Wright and this Crusader offense. Play action rolling to his left once again. Has his man throws it just a little behind and it's incomplete. That was intended for Grant Spain, and of course the Spain name here at FACS is. Synonymous. I mean, they've been a part of this program. As a matter of fact, that will be one of the relatives of one Mark Spain. You know him as Mark from Milan. His Mark brother from- was the athletic director here for many, many years before he passed away. Yeah, this will roll out pass to the left. It's, it's the only thing that the Knights have had cooking all night. But you can't sell out on the run yet. You can't just give up on the run uh, and go strict pass. But this is the only luck they've had. Yeah, the only co- slightly concerning thing is that it's been there each time. Now, that time uh, right threw the ball just a little bit behind his intended receiver. But it was there once again. Second and 10 with 2.05 left to go here in the first quarter. Here's right. Rolling to his right this time, looking for a man downfield, and it's going to be incomplete. Looks like he was going for, uh, let's see who that was intended for. Was that for Brian Shields? All right, here on the replay. Boy, they love to get their quarterback and bootleg him out. Rolls to his right. Actually, that was his fullback that he was looking for, trying to hit number 40. That's Trey Wampler. Yeah, just overthrew Wampler there just a bit. But, man, he's there when he's rolling out because that line's getting sucked in, and all of a sudden he's he's got some room to work. Just missed a couple of passes so far on this drive. Yeah, and the, and the Crusaders need this in the worst way. Third and ten. Two minutes exactly left to go from their own 20-yard line. They don't want to have to punt it, punt it back to this Bruin offense. Here we go, third down. It's an end around to the left side, trying to get outside. Gets the corner, and we'll see where they spot it out of bounds. It's close. It's very close. Yeah, that's down on our sideline. It's hard for us to I, see exactly where the ball went out there. Okay. Yeah, that will be fourth. All right, they'll say he went out at the 27-yard line that he stepped out at the 27, so it'll be fourth and three. Let's see what the Crusaders want to do. Do you say, you know, let's take a chance here. We don't want to give this ball back to the Bruins and try to go for it here. But if you don't get it, if you don't get it, it's big trouble. So let's see what the Crusaders, let's see what they do. The offense on the field still, fourth and three from their own 26-yard line. See if they're just trying to draw the Bruins off. And I think that's what's going on here. Backs are in the eye. You have twins to the short side. That's the left. And... Let's see if they call timeout. They do. The Crusaders call timeout. They were trying to get the Bruins to jump. They didn't do it. We'll take it with them. With exactly two minutes left to go here in the first quarter, your score, USJ 14 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. And just time for the punt. It is a good punt that takes a hit at the 47-yard line. And we'll go dead just shy of the Bruin 45. So the Bruins, with their third possession, leading 14 to nothing, Chuck, will begin this drive. We'll call it their own 45 with outstanding field position. Yeah, David Baker's been a been a, a good uh, a kicker tonight, good punter for the Knights, and they've had to use him a lot. But I like the way he kicks the ball. For some reason, this is twice in a row now, it's hit the turf, and it sticks in there. If I could do it with my golf shot, I'd be getting paid right now on the live tour. Bruins, by the way, uh, excuse me, Jackson Christian leading first quarter score 28 to nothing over Harden Academy. That offense is so electric. Pettigrew and the Bruin offense switch to each side here. Finch in the backfield. Here's another play action going for the slant and nearly intercepted that time. Stepping in, that's Jake Pennington, the linebacker, the outside linebacker, read that perfectly, stepped in it and nearly had the pick. Yeah, really good defense. That's the second uh, uh, slant pass tonight that's been uh, knocked down. This one almost picked. 
Tell you what, they pump fake that, and, of course, it's hard to do right there because, as you can see, with them setting up what looks like a draw, there was a rush straight to Pettigrew. So he had to get rid of it there. He didn't have time to, to pump or do anything else. Second and 10 for the Bruins from their own 45-yard line with a minute 38 left to go here in the first quarter. Twins to your right. Finch in the backfield. Pettigrew from the gun. He gives to Finch off the left side, still rolling, falling forward, has the first down and more. Nice job by the left side of that Bruin offensive line. That'll be a pickup of about 13 yards and good enough for a Thompson and Smith first down. What a luxury it is to have a guy like Finch, Kevin Finch Jr., on your team. You need a first down. You need eight yards. You need third and short. You feel like you can hand it to him any time and get there. First and 10 for the Bruins on the Crusader 42-yard line. Looking for more. This Bruin offense, a well-oiled machine this evening. And really, for the most part, most of the season. Pettigrew working from the gun. Finch to his right. Here's play action. Now out in the right side flight. He's got his man 45-30, 35-20. And finally taken off his feet inside the 10-yard line. That is Raleigh Seals, the tight end for a huge gain of 36 yards. And they'll spot him down at the eight-yard line with 53 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. That's a Thompson and Smith first down and first and goal Bruins. Look at the look at the speed of Seals here, really getting down that line and, and adding a mile per hour every single hash mark there. Yeah, that's a former defensive lineman. I know, I remember. <laughs> for sure. Here we go. Let's see if they look for Sane here down at the bottom. It's a swing. They find Sane, makes a man miss, and is finally, did he get into the end zone? It's going to be close. I think they're going to mark him down inside the one-yard line. I told you, they were, you knew they were looking for Sane on that one for sure. Yeah, this is where that weapon uh, that Sane is, that height, that six-foot-six size, can really be used. Back corner pile on. We saw that in Union City. It was a huge play then. I expect to see it again here. Yeah, second and goal from the one. That's a great block that time by Raleigh Seals. You see that? And a couple of the offensive linemen. That's a great play call as well. 20 seconds here on the play clock, but there's no seconds left in the first quarter. We're through 12 here in Cordova. Your score after one quarter, your USJ Bruins 14 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big. Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. And welcome back to Worthy Road Studios coverage of USJ football. You can also watch this game at the USJ Facebook page as well as on WNWS.com. Check it out there. Don't forget you can also see Jackson Christian as well as TCA and Trenton Peabody on that, on that format as well, all courtesy of Worthy Road Studios. Bruins second and goal from the Crusader 1, looking to try to put a lot of distance between them and this FACS Crusader team. So when you're in control of a game and you've got what probably will be the biggest game of your year, I know we said that last week when Hardin County was in town, but this one really, really is uh, the biggest game of the year because it's a region game and that Jackson Christian Eagle offense is so uh, electric. What do you do here? Do you just say, get your points, get your points, get your points, get your second team in? Or do you want to get reps here, game reps, You know, run, run a play just to see if it's there? We'll call that in, ju in just one second. From the one-yard line, here's Finch up the middle, untouched, and into the end zone for a Garrett Plumman and heating touchdowns. The Bruins have struck once again three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, it, it's there for him up the middle. I knew it was going to be there. I was curious if they were going to throw this ball to Sane just to keep that work in. But great play call, and you know that Finch is going to get a yard. you got to make it more challenging for him. Well, you know what? But, look, I mean, the way they've owned the trenches. Look what they did to Hardin County last week. English's kick is up, and it is no good this time. So your new score with 11.57 left to go here in the first half. Your USJ Bruins 20 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Football looks fun. I bet I would have been great at it. The first football playing deer, 
They would have made a movie about me and everything. Probably get Kurt Russell to play me. But alas, me and my dreams run right over again. For fast, reliable collision repair, trust the experts at Mitchell's Body Shop. And get back out there. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. Alex English set to kick off for the third time tonight. For the third time tonight. Remember, the Bruins actually won the toss, but FACS with an onside kick and got the football, so they ended up with the first possession. They'll also get the ball to start the third quarter. There's a whistle. It's a big kick by Finch, but there's a flag on the play, so we'll do that one all over. He hit that ball all the way about to the three-yard line in the air. Boy. Yeah, he's got such you a said it's something. Freshman. You're right. It's, I, don't, I don't know where they find these dudes, but it's every year. And I don't know, because you would say, oh, well, it's soccer, right? Because you know, USJ's got a phenomenal soccer program as well um, uh, with Castro there. But this is uh, something about these kids. They just know how to kick. Did you ever kick? We used to kick. I, I punted in junior high. Okay. Uh, I did hit. We would do warm before warm so we start going. Uh, I hit a 40-yard field goal once by far. That's far, awesome. Off a of kicking tee. But yeah, it was still. still 40 yards. Yeah. Here we go. English swinging that big leg once again, taken at the nine-yard line by FACS on the return. Nowhere to go, and he'll be rudely taken down around the 24-yard line. Number five, Noah Spencer, the sophomore in on that tackle. Hit him hard. Really nice kick by English, though. So impressed with this kid. And what a weapon it is to have because you, you, I can't imagine he's going to get any worse and then over the next three and a half years. I, well, you know, it would be a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a surprise. That would be quite a surprise. I remember watching Pledger kick a couple of years ago, and I thought, Lord, this kid's leg, is, he's got thunder in his leg. Same. And here I haven't seen his younger brother. I know he's not his brother, but my goodness, well, this kid kicks it Charles hard, too. Charles Campbell's kicking with the Charles eighth grade. Campbell, yeah. They've had kicker, our good buddy Will Purcell back in the day. Will Purcell got it started. The other day, first and 10 for the Crusaders from their own 24-yard line. Call it the 25. Right under center. Give off of right tackle to Pennington. Tries to bounce it out. He'll get a yard or two before rudely taken out of bounds by this USJ defense. And look, hey, the, the, the Crusaders are bent on trying to string these things out and get to the edge, but there's been nothing doing all night long. I was asking earlier, I mean, you can't abandon the run yet. I mean, we're still in the first half, 11.41 to go in the second quarter, but it's just not been there for them. No, and it's a 3-4 defense for, for, the, for the Bruins, but everybody acting, as you can see, you don't have a defender that's more than 10 yards off the ball. We'll see if they sag back here. Even in a two-wide receiver set, twins to each side. Pennington in the backfield, right under center. Strong side is your left. Here's the snap. Hand off the left tackle. And once again, we may have a face mask taken down for about a two-yard loss, but this is going to be a face mask. No doubt about that one. We could see, you could see that one back in Jackson. Yeah, he, he got in there. But if it's any defense, he didn't mean to. <laughs> hey, uh, officials, he didn't mean to. Yeah, I mean, you can tell. <laughs> he didn't even look at where he was pushed into it. I, don't yeah. even, I can't believe they called a flag yeah, on that. I'll be honest I with you. I can't either, man. So the White Hat going to deliver the bad news. That's a face mask on the Bruins. Now it's five yards. So this should not result in a first down. Let's see where they end up spotting and where they initially took him out. Let's see. They will spot it just shy of the 35. Now, they're – well, that stick would have it a half yard short, but they're going to give him a first down regardless. So it will be a first down because of the distance for the Crusaders, first and 10 from their own 35-yard line with right under center. Josh Wright, the junior quarterback. Impressive arm, to be sure. A single wide out to each side. Here's the snap. 
handoff to Pennington trying to string it out to the left side and the same result. I'm stunned. I'll be honest with you. I'm stunned. Whether it's strong side, short side, it doesn't matter. USJ is just winning the point of attack and everybody's playing discipline, staying home, scraping, perfect angles. There's just nowhere there from the run on the boundary. You're going to have to do it in between the tackles. You know, they haven't had a lot of success. These tackles are getting moved back from the ball. You can see it on the snap on our instant replays. They're getting pushed back. I don't know where you find room. And you're right. You can't do it on the weak side or the strong side up to this point. So now we're just waiting for a rollout. Now, Melton's starting night because of Parker Barnes being out, right? Melton's been everywhere. That was him again. He has been all over this field tonight for this defense. One of the most impressive things I've noticed this year, especially on the defense, is when second team comes in, the depth that this squad has. I mean, you don't miss a lot of beats between first stringers and second stringers. One second on the play clock. They're going to have to call a timeout to avoid the penalty here. And they avoid it, and they will avoid the penalty, but they'll use their second timeout. So your score with 10.48 left to go here in the second quarter, your USJ Bruins 20 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. The name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today Crusaders to discuss your insurance second needs. and nine from their own 36-yard line. Here's Wright going for it all deep downfield, caught at the Bruin 40-yard line by Brian Shields and finally taken off, or they'll, call, they'll blow the play dead, but one-on-one -on -one coverage, testing Barksdale. Nobody's really beat him this year. That time, Brian Shields does. It's a big pickup and a first down and the first trip outside of the onside kick into Bruin territory at the 40-yard line. Yeah, you know, Barksdale is right there with him stride for stride. He just steps up and makes that grab there. Wonderful catch there, and, and the biggest offensive uh, play we've seen so far no for the doubt. Knights. No doubt about that. So first and 10 for the Crusaders from the Bruin 40-yard line with 10.09 left to go in this first half. Bruins leading 20 to nothing. What big arm. Big arm by this quarterback. And again, Josh Wright, just a junior, comes from under center, backs in the eye. Here's the handoff to Pennington off the right side. Has a slight slither, picks up about a yard or two, and then finally taken down. We could get another face mask. FACS sideline begging for it. I see no mustard. Yeah, Christian Melton in there again on the tackle. You called it early. He's been all over this field tonight for the Bruins. I didn't see. We look back on this replay and see. Maybe. You're right there at yep. the end. Looks like one of the Bruins got a swipe across the face mask. Again, didn't but mean I don't to. see no flag. You can't throw it now. No, <laughs> don't no, come up here and look now. at our replay. Just because we got a great camera. What if they did, or would they just let us? We make wouldn't the let call? them in. We'd lock them out. That's not a problem. That's right. Why is this paper towel right here? You know, uh, I don't. Okay, you pull it out and see what happens. Uh, Hopefully, the whole better not. I'm about to down. say, yeah, it could be whole, everything holding this uh, up. I love this place. Though. Oh, it's really nice. No Very doubt. nice. Second and eight for the Crusaders from the Bruin 38-yard line. In the eye. Here's a fullback dive, snuffed out, nothing doing that time. Did you get fooled by that? I got fooled a little bit. But you know why I got fooled? Why? Our cameraman got fooled too, so I was going with him. He kind of jerked back to follow yeah. the quarterback rolling around on the bootleg as well. I, 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 knew I that thought had I saw to be the dive. Yeah. I knew that had to be coming sooner than later, and it's an A-gap dive for the fullback. Jacoby Moore and nothing doing that time stood up at the line of scrimmage. By I keep having to say this because it keeps being true, a host of Bruin defenders. Really good team defense uh, on all levels so far by the Bruins. These guys, are they're making them work for it. Any positive yardage they get is tough. Third and eight for the Crusaders. 8.25 left to go here in the first half. Right under center, twins to the left. Here's the snap. Rolling to his left. Rolling, rolling, looking, looking. Now firing downfield and way out of bounds. 
intending that pass for Brian Shields, but just throw, basically throwing that ball out of bounds, if you will. That's going to set up fourth and eight for the Crusaders, but you've got to believe they go for it here. Yeah, they've got to. If you put a pedometer on Josh Wright, the quarterback, he's ran four miles so far in the first half. Unfortunately, it's just been sideline to sideline trying to make something happen. What am I putting on him? It's a pedometer. A pedometer. A pedometer. I've never heard of a pedometer. I don't know if it's a real thing, but, you know, it's one of those words that sounds like that's what it could mean. I don't know. I'm not saying it's not. I, I'm gonna go, I just don't think. I don't I, know if pedometer's a thing. I, I'm about 57% sure it is. <laughs> so, I mean, that's more than half. Okay, here we go. They're going to go for it. Fourth and eight for the Crusaders from the Bruin 38-yard line. And looks like Wright's going to call his final timeout of the half with eight ch and change to play. The Crusaders burn their third timeout, and we'll take it with them. Your score with... 8.09 left to go here in the first half. USJ 20 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. If I had to walk back to Jackson, I would count the steps on my pedometer. Yeah, look at you. I'm glad I could be here tonight. I'm, I, I try to me teach too. you one no word a day. I was getting down here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one word a day. Thank you for that wonderful supper we had at the gas station. Right. <laughs> was that a Dairy Queen, dude? <laughs> Fourth and eight, right back to back to pass under pressure, rolling to his right, and will go out of bounds. Well, short of that first down, but there is laundry on the field. Let's see what we've got here. It's a hold on the Crusaders. This will surely be declined, and the Bruins will, should take over first and 10 with excellent field position once again. It's a hold. It's declined. First down Bruins. Here's what I like about this. You'll see on the replay here, Riley Seals just holds his arms up. He's like, look, I'm being held. I'm being held. He's a tall guy. Watch on this replay. He's letting the, the referee know that he's being held. Riley Seals is in midseason oh, form right oh, here in the midseason. Look at that. He's like, come on now. That was very Do you know why he was also doing that? In case right threw the ball on the run. He was also big time, knocked yeah. that down. So it was a smart play by the senior altogether. I am surprised that the right just went out of bounds. I mean, you know, he acquiesced fourth down and then said, Here, here's the ball, Bruins. Well, they hit hard. I don't know if you've seen Ty O'Neill and company out there tackling, but it's probably not a lot of fun. I have seen them. I've, 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 seen, the, I've seen a couple of Bruins games this year. Have you, though? I have. have I feel like ever. I have. Go back and watch them. Is that what you're, tell everybody what you're watching on the way down here. Oh, I am on episode four. I think so. I think that's uh, right. Season five of Cobra Kai. Yeah, thoughts? You know, more rugged in the first couple of episodes, but starting to get back to the bubblegum ways. It'll go back soon. I like them, yeah. you know, but it was pretty rugged, those first couple. Man, we're down in Juarez or wherever they were, and... MMA fights and, you know, mixing it up and all kinds of other stuff. Yeah, Bad people dude. like stealing your wallet, things and like that. Now they're fighting at the water park. Yeah, kicking the dude in the inner tube, acting like it hurts. All right, you guys, get out. You know, it's, it's you know, I'm, not, I'm acting like I don't like it. I love it. Me Meet too. up with it. I'm just trying to figure out why I care about a couple of warring factions in Southern California among teenage karate students. <laughs> but Daniel I love Russo, it. Johnny Lawrence, what's not to like? Now, there is another flag on the field. It's still sitting right around the 41-yard line. See that? I do. It looks like the officials are conferring here. We'll see what they say. I don't really know what the talk's about. So you want to go to Perkins after the game? Yeah, don't we go to the Dairy Queen. That's in a gas station. Man, that was a good burger, dude. I don't know what you're – you ate that raggedy chicken basket. Yeah, the chicken tent. I don't know that that the was – The burger was the bomb, dude. It was great. I tried, tried to, tried to have, let us have a good night and find a Chick-fil-A here in this town, but I didn't find one. You no, know, they are opening up a Whataburger around here. I know. That would have been crazy. It's not ready I've still yet, never been. It's over by the Wolf Chase Mall. It's not It'll ready be a minute. Yet. If we go there, we're going to that Chinese buffet. At 9.30 at night? No, no. Lord, no. I'm talking about like prime time, 6 o'clock. 
when the food's fresh. And I didn't get this body by eating at 930 at night. <laughs> I'm just telling you. That's right. You eat much earlier and later. Now, our producer over there, me and Paul, we have eaten in this town many a late Friday nights. Well, we ought to go, Paul. Tell them to the hop, baby. <laughs> you go to the hop, Paul? Look at, look at Paul. Paul. Hey, calm down. You're way too <laughs> calm animated. Down. Calm down. Good Lord. If he goes with us, we got to wait for him to break all this stuff down. Yeah, so. no, he ain't going with me. I'm, I'm going to get my pedometer smoking. At the ball field in the morning. What's up, Charlie Garner? Here we go. Bruins scored every time they have had the football tonight. Can they make it four for four? We shall find out soon enough from their own 40-yard line. 8.03 left to go here in the first half. Swing pass caught by Finch at his own 35 to the 40, to the 45. Across midfield, still on his feet into Crusader territory, taken out of bounds about the 36-yard line. That's a 24-yard pickup and a Thompson and Smith first down. Really nice run here. Or, I'm sorry, swing pass here. And that's been there all night. I love the way Finch has come on the past few weeks. He's had a nice season. But the past few weeks, I feel like he's such a tool and a weapon here. And then Pettigrew just, just dishing off. Dishing yeah, off, well, freshman uh, Charlie Goss, that him just bit straight down. And, and a total free release for Finch with nobody there in the flat. He doesn't need Maroon, but he had it anyway. First and 10 for the Bruins from the Crusader. 36-yard line. This offense on the move. Once again, three wide receivers. Here's the snap, hand off to Finch, straight ahead off the right side, maybe about two, three yards on first down. Finch is running hard. And if you're, you're a coach here, what are you thinking? How many points? Is it going to be the first half no matter what? First three quarters? Is it 30 points? What number are you getting to before you put your second stringers in? 42. 42 well, is it a good depends number. on how this fin. Uh, you know, look, it, it, it depends. I mean, this is Knights get the ball a half. real chance. For, uh, yeah, look, FACS is not an incapable football That's team. Right. So it's not. I mean, this wasn't the Tipton Rosemark game. This isn't the Liberty game. And by the way, the Bruins are playing great football these days. Absolutely, they are. Second and eight from the 36. Pettigrew under pressure finds his man Seals on the right sideline, busting through defenders, fumbles the football. Let's see who falls on it. It's a wrestling match. Sane is on it with two Crusaders there. Let's see. They are going to – now, Davis comes up with the football, but they give the ball to FACS, but there's also a flag on the play. So there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, the flag could negate everything there. Really nice play. Now, and, and what we may or may not see here is how long Pettigrew held on to that before he dumped it off there for the screen to Seals. But this great job. This could be job. a hold or an offensive, or an offensive lineman downfield. This could be on the Bruins. Let's see what we've got. Personal foul. I don't know what that is. Helmet to helmet. Was oh, that a helmet to helmet? Helmet to okay. helmet, yeah. On the on offense, seals. wow. Uh, now, they gave the football to the Crusaders. Uh, Davis Sane came up with that football, but they gave the ball to FACS. What else? Perfectly executed play. Look at that block. Holy cow, get the number of that freight train. That's the call that they made right there. Boy, I'd like to go back and see that one again. If I can't believe, did I see that wrong? Now, that, was, that look, that looked like a fantastic block, and that's one of your captains for USJ. Well, I, I want to say 45. I don't know. No, it's Mark so Cox. Not right. Mark Cox. 62, okay. Mark Cox. But they are nonetheless going to get – oh, man, I just I, – I don't, I don't see what he saw. You got to err on the side of caution anytime there is helmet to helmet contact. But I think the result of the block is what really helped the sale. Well, we'll see. Crusaders take over this possession from their own 22 yard line, trailing your Bruins 20 to nothing. Handoff straight up the middle. Pennington, as per use, not much doing, but this time still has his feet moving and will actually pick up about four yards when it should have been at most a one yard gain but they did what they should have been doing earlier. I told you, you're not going sideline to sideline on this defense. If you're going to do anything, your one chance might be straight up the middle, and that that may constitute the best run they've had tonight for four or five yards. Yeah, four yards in a cloud of dust. We'll get you paid. We got an official down here in the, uh, in the Gator with the uh, th uh, physical therapist here. Hope he's okay. You see that? I, do I see it? Well, I, mean, I don't know. You didn't come in. Where? Only. I don't know if you broke it down. Where? He's had a great season up to this point. Oh, that guy in the down. black and white. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> oh. Uh, let's see. We have a whistle. And it looks like a sideline warning on USJ, maybe. Look at me. You know everything. I've seen some stuff. 6.02 left to go here in the first half. Bruins leading 20 to nothing. You know Second, what he said? And we'll call it six for the Crusaders. 
Do I know what was what who said? What, what was said to get the warning? <laughs> no, that means they're standing too close to the field. They have to back up. Oh, I thought he meant he's attacking him. <laughs> you thought he was attacking him, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, no. They were giving him a Gatorade bath. Second and six <laughs> for the Crusaders, the right under center. From the that is a false start that did not get called. Uh, not much doing, but breaking tackles. Pennington falling forward for a yard or two. Now a flag comes out at the end of this play. Watch the right side on this replay. Watch the right side of the offensive line. It was either a tight end or a tackle. Watch right here. Look at that. how you miss it. <laughs> right there. Yeah, There's no doubt on the start. replay. You see it. There is a flag on the play. Now this was more on the tackle. Yeah, it's Sam McMillan in on the tackle. Really, really nice tackle, I felt like, there. But it's going to be another personal foul yeah. against USJ. That's going to be good enough for a first down for the Crusaders. And that's really been what's sort of keeping Crusaders in this football game. Uh, a couple of personal fouls in the last two or three minutes. Uh, I didn't see what happened on that one. But that, play, ne that should have never happened because the play should have been blown dead. It looked that like right a tackle. good hard tackle to me. It's but, tough there. But that right, that, that, that tied in absolutely went way before that snap, but they didn't call it, so it didn't happen. First and 10 from the 44, right under center, looking for his man, straight go, looking for Shields, and beautifully broken up that time. Are they actually wanting to pass interference on that? Come on, y'all. We're all professionals here. That was great coverage that time by Jace Barksdale, step for step with Brian Shields. Two phenomenal junior athletes. It just, it, I don't know what you could possibly want. We have the replay. Look, perfect position that time. Goes up and knocks the ball away. What is it that you actually think you see? Please. It's the push no. at the end. I, believe me, I get it. Barksdale made an unbelievable tip there. You're begging a little bit at that point for the push Come at the on. end. Come on. We're all professionals here. When it's warranted, do it. That is not. That was wonderful football and outstanding coverage by the junior DB. Yeah, Jace Barksdale was right there. And we have a timeout. I believe that should be the Bruins first because the Crusaders have no timeouts left. So the Bruins call their first timeout, and we'll take it with them. Your score with 5.27 left to go here in the first half, USJ 20 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. At Nest Realty Jackson, connections and relationships are at the heart of everything we do. We wake up every day with the goal of helping our agents build trust, relationships, and community. Let's connect. Home furnishings, appliances, bedding, and so much more. Kaufman's. At the Bypass and Oil Well Road in Jackson. Home furnishings for every room in your home. Custom upholstery options, too, with professional advice. Major appliances from America's top name brands. Mattresses and bedding accessories outdoor living and grilling too. And our fully stocked warehouse helps prevent supply chain delays. Kaufman's, for your life. Welcome back here in Cordova, Tennessee with 527 left to, go ahead. 527, I don't know, whatever you did, don't do that. All right. 527 left to go here in the first half. Second and 10 for the Crusaders. Here is an end around to Shields trying to string it out. He finally gets the edge, cuts back inside, and he has a first down and much more. Boy, the offensive weapon for this team is Shields. Whatever you did, I, if, readjust that, please. There you go. Perfect. First down into Bruin territory. They'll spot that football. Let's see where they take him down. Am I missing a flag? Uh, yes. Okay, we didn't see one, but okay. there was a hold. It was that flag thrown on the other side of the field. I was trying to figure out why they were walking backwards. So that first down negated, outstanding pickup that time by Brian Shields, but they say it was a hold that sprung it. That, and that may be, that's the first time they've had any any room to run around the end there. And I was going to give credit to Jacoby Moore for the block down the field, but he may have been called with a hold there. So they'll bring it back and into back into Crusader territory at their own 39-yard line with 5.05 left to go here in the first half. Second and 15 for the Crusaders. Seven in the box, now falling out. That's Barksdale. And the play clock will expire. That's going to, and they don't have any timeout, so they can't call it. 
And off of the penalty, off of the holding penalty, they get called for delay of game and the, and the FACS sideline going crazy. Yeah, they weren't happy there. Wright thought they had another timeout in the pocket. He tried to call it. He wasn't getting it. And he was like, what's going on here? But you only get three a half. The old Chris Weber? The old Chris <laughs> Weber. Chris Weber is what it was. Second and a cab ride from their 34-yard line. Not where the Crusaders want to be. Right under center. Looking for that end around once again to Shields, cutting back against the grain, but all he sees is a wall of white. He may gain about a yard, but staying home and playing contain half of that USJ defense, everybody where they're supposed to be, to be at Bruins not burned this time. They're doing, the Crusaders are doing anything they can to creatively put the ball in Shields' hands here, but USJ's just too good everywhere for that to happen. And number 55, I do believe Ty no, O'Neill was in on the tackle there. The Double nickel said no thanks. Uh, Alex Wallace also came up from his position to force that play back up into the, in, in the inside and that waiting defensive wall on the right side of that Bruin defense. Third and they'll still say 20. They need the Bruin 46-yard line for the first down, trailing by 20. Here's Wright rolling under pressure, looking for his man way short, intended for Jacoby Moore, his senior tied in. If he does catch it, it's a gain of just a few, and it wouldn't have went anywhere. Perfectly defended. Great pressure by the defense, forcing Wright to throw that football, and the Bruins' defense is held once again. You know, on the holding period, uh, penalty that got called back that would have resulted in a first down for the Crusaders. I was watching Wright walk off there. It looked like his arm was bothering him a little bit. That was the first pass that we've seen that was woefully under, underthrown there. Yeah, he had real heat on him that time. That defense was given. The, the pursuit was heavy. So the Crusaders will punt from their own 35-yard line. Here's the snap, the kick. It's a high wobbler that is going to be taken by the Bruins at the 40-yard line. That's Barksdale kicking down that right sideline into Crusader territory, still on his feet, breaking tackles, and all the way down to the 39-yard line. It looked like he was going to be stopped about the 45. Then you see this white jersey slither through a sea of green, and just inside that 40-yard line, the Bruins again with fantastic field position to start this drive. One of his most undervalued skill sets may be his patience there to let a block set up and to move around from a return returner. Jace Barksdale is fun to watch. Bruins leading 20 to nothing, 339 left to go here in the first half. Pettigrew from the gun, Finch to his left. Here's the give to Finch. No, he keeps it. It's a slant to Barksdale, but it is incomplete in and out of the hands. Boy, they faked me on the play action. I thought that was a handoff to Finch. Pettigrew pulls it back out, goes for the slant. One of the only times that he and Barksdale are not able to connect from that left slot. You'll see it right here. Slant once again, and yeah, just a drop. Just a drop. You will not see that more than likely again or any time this season because that was a perfect delivery by Pettigrew that time. Really was, and Pettigrew's size, he's able to see over the line and throw down uh, so well there. I love watching him play quarterback. Second and 10 for the Bruins. Here's Finch straight up the middle. He has a hole. He's still going. He's on his feet. 20, 15, 10, 5, and touchdown. There are no flags on the play. That is a Garrett plumbing and heating touchdown. Kevin Finch from 39 yards, and the Bruins have struck once again. Yeah, Finch, it just feels like it's there any time they want it. Great running again. It just well, outruns everybody at this point. There's a hole in the middle when it's when it you know the ball's first snapped, and he takes it all the way. When we come back, we'll take a look at that highlight again. I'll let you see a move that Kevin Finch made. Now, English with the extra point, and this time it's true, and your new score with 326 left to go here in the first mm -hmm. half. It's USJ 27, though they haven't put it up yet. It is 27, and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Buying a home is a major milestone, and at the Bank of Jackson, we want to help you achieve it. Our mortgage specialists can assist you with conventional, VA, FHA, or construction loans, as well as USDA and THDA development loans. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. All 
All right, we're going to give you a, re a look once again at this replay of this touchdown run by Kevin Fitch. All right, watch this, Chuck, about the 30-yard line. Here's Fitch, huge hole, rolling to his left, and boom, look at that, plants that left foot, cuts back inside, shakes the linebacker out his shoestrings, and takes it to the house for his second touchdown of the evening. How about that cut? Yeah, and that's his second touchdown of Ooh. over 30 yards, too. Yeah, once, that was nasty. Once he gets rolling, he's all the way down there. No doubt. Here is English with a high kick that is going to be taken about the 12-yard line by FACS. Still on his feet, trying to bounce out, looking for the edge up to the 30, still going, and finally taken out onto the ground about the 38-yard line. Give me a number on this. Is that 19? That's 19. 19. That is senior Ethan Gray with the return of 29 yards for the Crusaders. Yeah, Gray does a good job here getting a stiff arm, opening up a little bit of room. He's able to turn that ball up and gain another six yards for the Crusaders. And with this kind of night, you'll take anything you can get. Yeah, they'll spot it at the 38-yard line. Crusaders, who will get the ball to start the third quarter, trying to cash in here in the waning stages of this second quarter. Bruins leading 27 to nothing. Have done mostly everything right tonight. A couple of personal fouls and one extra point. But other than that, they have played flawless. Here we go. Backs in the eye. Here's the gift of Pennington off left tackle. Maybe two yards up to the 40-yard line. Setting up second and eight for the Crusaders with just over three minutes left to go here in the first half. you got to think the Crusaders are going to try and do everything they can to get the ball in number one's hand. Uh, Shields has been every bit of the offense. What little they've had tonight, he's had something to do with just about all of it. So you got to figure he'll, he'll end around here or throw the ball downfield to him with no timeout to here. That's what you got to do. Well, and, and, and look at the trust that they have in Jace Barksdale, though, because they've left him on that island several times tonight. Now, he's not matched up with them this time, but Will Horton on the other side of the field, who's been excellent in coverage all year long, second and eight for the Crusaders from their own 40. Here's Wright with the handoff to Pennington straight up the middle. He's hit, but kicks it back out, still on his feet into Bruin territory and finally taken down at the 46-yard line. He was hit near the line of scrimmage, but by far the best run of the night for Jake Pennington. And I think the coaching staff's starting to listen. you got to run in between the tackles in this one if you want a shot. Yeah, Melton was in there for early contact, and Pennington kind of bounced off of him, turned it up to his left, and was able to find some room and some space. Huge first down for the Crusaders. And I think Melton would have had the tackle, but one of his teammates yeah, kind of hit him from the side not meaning to, right. and kind of lost lost control of the tackle there. But nonetheless, it's a first down for the Crusaders with two minutes exactly left to go here in the first half from the Bruin 46-yard line. End around, snuffed out big time, nothing doing. Maybe a yard. That was Brian Shields, USJ disciplined defense that time. Watch this handoff. Riley Seals is one step away from taking it himself on this. He was back there in the backfield, almost made a huge play, but the, the fact that he was able to get this penetration, look at that. Riley Seals almost took that ball right there. Well, he's invited there. You, you want, that's what they want. They want him to come up there to leave that space open, and he's supposed to go right there the, theoretically. So it's actually a great job by the, back, the second unit, that second-level unit of the Bruins, those linebackers, of sniffing that out because they invited him right there. They wanted him to do that. Right. Step in. I yeah, got you. No doubt about it. Second and nine for the Bruins from – or excuse me, for the Crusaders from the Bruin 45-yard line. Here's right. Play action rolling to his left, looking down downfield looking for his man he's got a monster arm but sometimes he puts just a little too much mustard on it and that time it sails over the outstretched hands of his intended receiver if I can get a number on that that is all the way across the field so I will try to get you that Will Horton with great coverage oh, it's hard to throw to receivers it's hard to throw to receivers who are just haven't been open all game look at this no one's open I mean where do you throw it? you can't throw yeah. it where it'll get picked off you gotta throw it where only your guy can make a play on it yeah that was Gavin Morris the intended receiver that time but you're right these two corners Horton and Barksdale have been phenomenal all year long really nobody's had you know the only who's had really a lot of success you know Hardin County had a couple you know there's really good receivers those were usually in between the hash uh, Union City had one or two but other than that nobody's been able to throw on these guys and they've been playing on an island third down for the Crusaders from the 45 yard line of the Bruins here's the snap and it's a hitch it's a backwards pass and was it incomplete? Incomplete. If he yeah, had caught it, he'd have lost line. yardage anyway. But that sets up fourth down. And if you're the Crusaders, so you're trailing 27 to nothing here. 
Uh, do you punt? I mean, there's only 59 seconds left to go here in the first half. You're going to get the ball to start the third quarter. And look at Will Horton. He was all over Shields that time. I think maybe Moore saw that and he just threw it out of bounds because his man was perfectly covered. Yeah, and they're going to call. They're going to call that. Look, they moved the, the sticks back here. Yeah, fourth and fourteen now. Um, so that's what they'll say. It was backwards. backwards so he ended pass, up losing yeah. three yards. Let's see what the Crusaders try to do. Are they going to go for it? Looks at least in appearances that they are. As right is under center, fourth and thirteen. They are going for it. Rolling, rolling under pressure. Firing a huge right arm, but well past his intended receiver. That was Brian Shields, but he overthrew everybody by about ten yards that time. Yeah, there's nobody that was going to catch that ball. Uh, what did like that you said, he's, you flash, he's flashing that arm, but there's just nobody there. What, well, are, you, what are we talking about, the arm strength? But, uh, but um, the way that that's, this is kind of turning out, Joe Melton, last year for the, for the volunteers, monster arm, but just too much on it. Yeah, couldn't do anything yeah, with yeah, it. Yeah, way too much on it. So let's see if the Bruins, who get the football, a yard shy of midfield with 52 seconds left, can they get into field goal range or are they going for the house once again leading 27 to nothing? If they could score again, we would start the third quarter under the mercy rule. Pettigrew from the gun, twins to each side. Finch in the backfield, straight drop back, looking, finds his man on a drag route. Caught, that's Barksdale, makes a man miss. Shimmy's out of bounds at the 36-yard line. Look at the patience on that route by Jace Barksdale. That's a one-yard drag route, and he really made everything else happen on his own. If you're, if you're keeping score at home, this is – Two stiff arms and a shimmy. Here's your first stiff arm here, right there. See you later, alligator. Here's another one coming up mixed with a shimmy. That's a combo you don't see often. Barksdale, huge first down Out for the Bruins. Out at the 37, Bruins. that's a Thompson and Smith first down with 40 seconds left to go here in the first half. And Bruins looking for more. When's the last time you shimmy? Right here. Is that a shimmy? <laughs> it's, it's a charge. Here we go. Again. Pettigrew going for it. He's got a man sane, and it is caught at the 15-yard line. The defender falls down and into the end zone for a 37-yard strike from Berkeley. Pettigrew to Davis Sane, the senior transfer for the touchdown. The Thompson and Smith, excuse me, the Garrett Plumbing and Heating touchdown for the Bruins. Look at this pass here and this touch by Pettigrew. Just stepping up in the pocket and making the throw. Zane finally hit and pay dirt. You know he loves that because he works so hard blocking uh, mm. for Finch all the time and for Barksdale. Great job yeah, there. Yeah, just hit him on that seam route on the right side. Here's English with the extra point. Did he push it a little? Let's see. Yeah, he did. Pushed it to the right just a little. It's no good And your new score with 34 seconds left to go here in the first half. USJ 33 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive and Drive, Jackson. And a one and a one and a here we go. Here is a look at this play once again. Pay attention to your right seam right here. Berkeley Pettigrew, plenty of time, steps up, fires a strike down that right seam. Look at that. Caught at the 15. Patient route by Davis Sane and strutting into the end zone for his first touchdown of the evening. Yeah, I really like watching Sane uh, out there running because, you know, he, like I said, he blocks so hard, so heavy all the time. But once he had that, when there was nobody between him and the end zone, and what a first half here for USJ. Kind of played out like you thought? Yeah, yeah, just doing everything right. Just perfectly executed football. English with a bomb off that right foot, hits at the one and goes into the end zone. You wanted to see a touchback. There you go. Saw another one. That's a, it's two so far for, the, for those keeping score at home. And there's a decent chance you will see, see one again tonight. I bet, I bet we might. We get you some scores at the half. Some, the, the, I want. I haven't even looked to see the score of that Milan and Haywood. We normally game. have a laptop up. We're trying to you know be careful with it. We're using a jet pack for our broadcast, so we don't want to you know tax that thing too much. Uh, otherwise, we'd have the site up where we could give you some other scores. Feel free to text them in. I can see it on the 277-5155 number. I'll be able to read them. From their own 20, here's a gift to Pennington off left tackle. 
for a gain of five yards, but a flag has come in on the play. With 27 seconds left to go here in this one, let's see the call. White Hat going to come over here and give us the details. He say personal foul, face mask against the Bruins once again. You know, this would be something. You know, what are you going to talk about at halftime? This is definitely going to be something that the coaching staff's going to address because you can't lose this many yard and penalties against a team like Jackson Christian next week. By the way, Jackson Christian cruising once again, putting up video game type numbers in the first half. We'll get you scores at the half when we come back at the, in the halftime show. Right. Hand off to Pennington once again, to the, this time to the right. He has a seam still on his feet into Bruin territory and all the way down to the 45-yard line. That's a 15-yard pickup for Pennington with one second left here in the first half. And now that last second will, in fact, click off. And after two quarters of play here in Cordova, Tennessee, your halftime score, USJ 33 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state-of-the-art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. Shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. Oh. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Championship DNA. That's what you find in Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Thompson & Smith, the area's premier independent insurance brokerage, has been serving families and businesses in the region through its founding companies since 1927. With their many insurance company partners, Thompson & Smith provides insurance products for family, home and auto, contractors, retailers, restaurants, manufacturers, medical and dental clinics as well as any other business or organization seeking quality coverage, risk management expertise and customer-focused service. Call them today to discuss your insurance needs. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive and Drive, Jackson. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 
At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way, peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. At Arrington Funeral Directors, we accept all pre arranged funerals. So you may have pre arranged your funeral in this town, with another funeral home, or even in another state. But we accept all pre arranged funerals because we're here to serve families. We realize you have a busy lifestyle, and at the Bank of Jackson, we're here to help you fulfill all of your financial needs, personal and business loans, mortgages, online banking and bill pay, and so much more. Serving the Jackson area for 25 years. The Bank of Jackson, your down-home community bank. You belong here. Member FDIC Equal Housing Lender. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. on Carlock Automotive Van Drive Jackson Turn to the experts Since 1955 Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing heating and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee a proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack, from the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio. Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. The most important benefit when you buy from Jones Chevrolet at Three Way? Peace of mind. Jones Chevrolet's warranty forever comes with every qualifying new and pre-owned vehicle. Powertrain coverage for as long as you own your vehicle. Find out more at Jones Chevrolet in Three Way. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big! Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This is how we Friday night. How do you Friday night? This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. This is how we Friday night. No matter how you Friday night, you always win at Kaufman. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. At Alive Hydration Drip Spa, we offer top-of-the-line IV nutritional therapy, which has a wide variety of health benefits. From immune system boosters and skin care, fatigue, energy, and even hangover relief, you can be sure we have an IV blend that's right for you. All of our blends are administered by one of our experienced nurses in a spa setting to ensure you leave feeling re-energized and refreshed. Give us a call or visit our website to book your appointment today. We have what it takes to make you feel alive again at Alive Hydration Drip Spa. 
Lifestyle Vision, located at Thompson Farms, offers patient-centered, comprehensive eye exams. Select your new look with our latest styles from exclusive brands. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years, Carlock Automotive Van Drive, Jackson. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731 660 1052. Welcome back to the half here in Cordova, Tennessee. Seabass Chuck Walker. That's the visiting band, by the way. That's Deer Park Stadium. That's the visitor side. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I, I was like, other games of yeah. note, this yeah. looks like yeah, the that's largest the, that's, school in Tennessee. That's versus the visitor side over like there. Like Munford and yeah. Alcoa. This is the visiting band, by the way. That's not the home Did band. Did you say that, like, seven-man band? Oh, yeah. That's Rock, awesome, man. Good for them, baby. Good hey, a couple them. scores for you. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> What's the score of the Deer Park? Uh, I haven't seen it yet. They're just, I'm just looking at the at the halftime show. They don't have the score they don't have, up there. They don't have as good of cameras as we do. In that beautiful, beautiful two-tone turf there. That's because they uh, don't have Paul Schulze. They don't Worthy have Paul Road Schulze. Studios. That's crazy. We have to score up the whole time on our game. Now, a couple of scores of note of interest for you. Jackson Christian leading Hard Academy 56 to nothing Ooh. at the half. At the half at the reservation, it's 21 to nothing. South Gibson over Northside. Northside. Still looking to score on the season. I mean, they were never going to win this game tonight. But I mean, you're 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 talking about this is the fifth game of the year, and so it's hard times right now on the reservation. And the game everybody wanted to know about. It. Everybody's been looking forward to. Nine minutes left to go in the first half. Haywood twenty-eight, Milan seven. You know. I mean, if they go in there to Johnny Hale and smoke them after Milan's already beat Trenton Peabody, he's already beaten Medina, Hardin County lost to USJ, is it going to be it's Haywood and then a distant, very distant everybody else? Is that what's on the line tonight if they if they complete that blowout? If, if we're taking Munford out and, and Henry County out, then, then, yeah, it looks like you may be right. Uh, a couple other scores here. I don't know how many you have. I've got a few here. Westview leads Camden 49 to nothing. Uh, Crockett County is trailing the Obion County Central Rebels. I saw that. 28 to 7. Uh, the aforementioned Henry County, we don't know if we count them or not in our area, but they are leading Clarksville Northwest 35 0. And Southside and Liberty, did you give that update? It's 28 6. It. Yeah, 28 uh, 6. Southside leading at the half. Lexington over McNary 35 to nothing. Um, and I hit a button, so you he just hit need a to button, y'all. You need to kill some. And time. I will tell you this: in that Southside Liberty game, uh, excluding JCM, who's not playing a uh, you know a regular yeah, varsity schedule, junior varsity schedule. Uh, one of those two teams is going to be the first team to win, unless Northside can erase a twenty-one point deficit, and they haven't scored this year, so they would be. You wouldn't think that they would. Uh, some team in the public school sector for, in Madison County is going to win their first game tonight. A record of 0-12 between those three teams coming into tonight. Something had to give. And so far to this point, it looks like Southside well on their way to their first win. Halls in West Carroll. That's 3-1 and one Halls and 4-0 and oh West Carroll. And a good one at West Carroll. And right now, the visiting Tigers leading West Carroll. Chuck, 14-7. Yeah, uh, McKenzie, 49 to nothing. Do we talk about that yeah, over, over Perry, Perry County? County? They're just a well Boy, machine. McKenzie. Same score applicable to that. Uh, I, I, I just had it just a second ago. Oh, I'm ago. so sorry. No problem. Uh, so, by the way, Henry County leading 35 to nothing. Munford on top of Overton, 40 to 14 in that one. Uh, anything surprise you? I, I think the thing that surprises me is that Crockett County score with O'Brien. 
Yeah, that definitely surprises me a little bit. And then not not the fact that Haywood County is leading per se, but the fact that it's twenty eight to seven in Johnny Hale. That's a tough place to play. They come out there. They get so serious about it. They'll black out their fence. They're like, look, you guys either come in here and watch it, but you can't stand out there and watch it. Yeah, by the way, I just, I'm sure you knew this. Uh, I didn't know this till a couple of months ago. Do you know that Johnny Hale was a lady? Yes. Only The only reason I know that is because you know, somebody told me. I would have get, And if you would have asked me to guess, I would have said a man because I would forgotten it. But, yes, now that you've said that, I do remember it. Yeah. Now let's talk about uh, – oh, by the way, l l I need to put this out there because it is certainly matters because these young men work very, very hard. Uh, so we want to make sure we get that out there. Cooper Sykes is the other kicker for this Bruin football team, and sometimes he kicks the extra points as well. Uh, apparently he has kicked a couple of them tonight. And we did not see that. We thought that it was English. So I got you. That's my fault. We want to know it's not. Uh, well, it's, no, no, no. I got to look at the numbers. That's, that's all I do. Is but we want to make you. sure that that young man, because Cooper Sykes works just as hard as everybody else, the 5'10", 160-pound sophomore, also involved in this game tonight, uh, kicking extra points to go along with freshman Drew English. So we wanted to make sure that we got that out there for Cooper and his family and friends out there. Your Bruins leading 33 to nothing at the half. All right, Takeda, let's talk about it. We will begin. Again, by the way, this third quarter under the mercy rule, remembering that this season the mercy rule in the second half starts at 30 points instead of 35. And I have a feeling we may see a quite a bit of Jackson strap, at least in the fourth quarter of this football game, if things don't change. Yeah, there's going to be some guys that we definitely are going to see. i got to quit saying, yeah, it's my bad. Uh, it's going to be Jackson, Strap, and company. But this team, this depth, there is not a huge drop between uh, the first string and second string, like I said. So it's really fun to see some of these freshmen and sophomores come in uh, and make a difference. And Because, you know, just like uh, Melton tonight, you never know when you're going to have to step up with Parker Barnes being out. And we don't know how long uh, Parker is going to be out. So he's getting some big-time playing time. And that's what these games give you. So I'm excited to see it. Plus, it lets you know where the future of the program is. That's a lot of fun to see. What would you think about what you saw in the first half tonight? Well, you know, kind of like what I thought. You know, kind of, kind of you and I talked about it. Um, USJ is a well-oiled machine. They're really, really good. I'm curious to see. We keep talking about what's going to happen next week, but we feel pretty confident. Next Thursday night, you've got the unstoppable force against the unmovable object. I mean, this is going to be two different sides. Uh, and obviously, Jackson Christian has a good defense because they haven't allowed very many points at all this year. But that offense is so explosive. Obviously, USJ has an explosive offense with Finch and Barksdale and Pettigrew and, and the rest of them sane out there. So they, they have an explosive offense. But USJ's defense is what's impressed me all year long. And then going back and watching the Jackson Christian games, that offense does look so explosive. Uh, with Boykin and Mosley, uh, Cam, all, all those guys. Cam so Boyd. this is, yeah, Cam Boy, this is going to be such a fun game. I'm more excited to watch this game. Uh, the only time I've ever been more excited to watch is when my son was playing. That's it. But this is going to be a great game. Cannot wait for it. Reminds and me of like those Milan Madonna games from a handful of years ago. Remembering this is a Thursday night game, so you won't find us on the air on Friday night. I will be in the studio, but just from 6 to 8. A little pregame talk, maybe a little red zone coverage for the first hour. Some of the other at. games. What do you mean? Just by callers. Oh, bring it on. <laughs> I'm not new to this. I can handle it. <laughs> no, no, no problem there. Uh, yeah, I, for, I'll tell you what I saw in that first half. A USA Brunner, they did have a couple personal fouls, uh, and they did give up the onside kick recovery. But this team, I mean, through the air, on the ground, in the trenches, they're just play, they're just really hitting on all cylinders right now. That Coach Strap and his staff have to be very happy with the last six quarters of football that his team's played. Make that the last ten because that goes back to Tipton Rosemark. And matter of fact, in those last ten quarters, they've given up a total of 17 points. You know, and we, so we can sit here talk about what Berkeley Pettigrew's done, and yes, and what Kevin Finch does and Jace Barksdale, but this defense has been every bit as good. Every bit is dominant in these last 10 quarters, and I'm really l enjoying watching them play. Yeah, Ty Neal, Brooks Jones, all the guys, Barksdale's coverage, Horton's coverage, uh, too many of them to name because it really is. It, it is such a good defensive unit, well-coached team. Uh, it, this is going to be 
an absolute blast. I don't know that either team, I don't think that Jackson Christian has run up against a team like USJ uh, with this defense and with this line uh, and the ability to even last oh. week when USJ was outsized, uh, the ability for USJ to win the battle at the line of scrimmage, really on both sides of the ball. I don't think Jackson Christian had seen that yet, and I don't know that we've seen an well, offense here as, as, as you know, the Bruin announcers. I don't know that we've seen an offense like Jackson Christian, so it's going to be a lot of fun. That part I agree, but you know, remember, Jackson Christian was trailing when that game was suspended in Middle Tennessee at, uh, was it, Columbia? See, I, I didn't uh, go back and watch that. Yeah. I didn't they, watch that game. They were trailing game. that game. I haven't watched uh, that one. Weather was a factor there for sure. Right. Uh, but it is – and St. George gave Jackson Christian a good game, too. It was 35-26 uh, when the Griffin came up about two or three weeks ago uh, to Jackson. Other than that, they've been railroading everybody. And tonight, those two teams that we'll see next Thursday night, they're outscoring in the first half. Their opponents combined 89 to nothing. You know? <laughs> that's crazy. So, I mean, that's guys, we're in for it. We are in for a treat. We still have 24 uh, minutes here. Uh, as again, this game will start under the mercy rule. I say the second half will start under the mercy rule as the Bruins lead by 33. And remember, Jackson, or excuse me, uh, the Crusaders will get the ball to start this third quarter. Yeah, and the Crusaders, you know, they get down a quick score, could change things up. The mercy comes off, you know, and, and then wait for it again. Uh, but, yeah, I look for see a lot of second stringers. Back in 1972, my mama was the head baton lady, the head, the, the major, majorette, head majorette yeah. uh, for that band right there. Take a look at that. Is yes. that the Deer Park Deer? That is the Deer Band and the, and the Deer Escorts. They call them like the, the, Deer, the Deer Escorts. Escorts. Yeah. Wow. I'll give you, let me get this. What, I'm going to remind you, my mother County was, is going on. was the majorette. All right. And you better be careful the because Deer you will go flying out of a press box. The, it, wow. Speaking of flying out of a press box, <laughs> mister, I've been in this 22 years. Here I go years. threatening you, people again. Every time I threaten somebody, on? something happens Yeah, of course to me. it is. It's I'm called not karma. not threaten you anymore. Here we go to start the third quarter. English with the kick taken at the 10 to the 20. 25 30 still on his feet dragging defenders and up to the 36 yard line and that is where the crusaders will begin their first drive of the third quarter yeah that's a positive return they've had a couple of those uh this uh, number 19 he runs the you've got the the lineup over here uh that's ethan gay he runs the ball hard there just, just the lineup yeah the lineup <laughs> sorry i'm a baseball Batting guy. first for your crusaders yeah and playing you know what i'm talking tonight. about you see the roster there let me punch you back in the face again i'd probably have it. now see now something bad needs to happen to you oh it's something bad's already happened to me oh wow i can tell you all kinds of stories <laughs> how much time you have that seems fair first and 10 from their own 36 yard line and remember that clock is running because this game is starting the third quarter more than 30 points they are under the mercy rule here we go, first play of the thir or third quarter, and it's Pennington stringing it out, and looks like it was going to go down around the line scrimmage, but he works his way around that edge and falls forward for about a six-yard gain up to the 41-yard line. Nice grab there around the edge, looking at second and five. The clock continues to tick. We're at 10.47 now in the third quarter, and it looks like a lot of the starters are still out there for USJ. It's the third time in five weeks that the Bruins have started the third quarter, uh, and it's a mercy rule on the clock. You ain't going to put them on it, though. No, <laughs> you know, no, you're not. You'd have to be an awfully good football team to do that. Second and four for the Crusaders. Here's Morris with the handoff to Pennington. Once again, he's popped but falls forward for about a three-yard gain. He'll come up just a go short of that first down. That's going to set up third, and we'll call it about half a yard for the Crusaders from the 45. Good wow. job here. Oh. They're going to give him the first. Ain't no big deal, really, but we'll go ahead and call it a first. It's not, but we'll give right. him the first. Right, yeah, I'm kind of wondering too there. <laughs> but we'll give it to him anyway. First and 10 for the Crusaders from their own 46-yard line. 9.51 left to go here in the third. Single wide receivers to each side. Backs in the eye, right under center. Full back dive to Moore, who is upended that time. A beautiful play that time by number 24, Brooks that, Jones. Brooks. Look at this one right here, man. And that's another one of those full back dives to the A gap. And Brooks Jones comes up and just cleans him up. Look at this. Goes low. And Moore's a big guy, by the way. And look at this. Jones just submarines him, flips it. You talk about a form tackle. It'll be about a yard gain, but what a tackle that time by Brooks Jones. Brooks Jones definitely watched the Chargers game last night, saw Derwin James on Travis Kelsey out there, flipped him up, put him down, God. second and long. Herbert's 
99-yard pick six, the difference in that football yes, game and my fan duel account. Second and nine for the Crusaders from their own 47. The handoff to Pennington trying to stretch it out. He'll fall forward a, sh a yard short of midfield. He'll pick up about two on second, setting up third and seven for the Crusaders just shy of midfield. Still not, not getting around the edge. They haven't gone between the tackles yet. Uh, it's just not there for them for big games. U uh, big games, USJ is all over them here, just sniffing them out. We're going to have the speed in the backfield for it. You know, for me, I, I think that Brian Shields, they need another Brian. They need one more Brian Shields to make that go because Pennington's a hard runner, but he's not a fast runner. And they're trying to beat him to the edge, and they're just faster than he is. Bruins defense, third and seven, looking for a hold here. Under center is right. Pennington in the backfield, twins to his right. Rolling to his right, under pressure, looking for his man over the outstretched hands of Jacoby Moore. And do we have a flag, or is that what you're telling me? Uh, no, we don't have a flag, but we could have a flag here. Look at the guard. Look at the left guard here. Uh, right, right to the left of the center. He moves so early. Look at that. Yeah, no trying flags. to get out of that position. And almost runs into the quarterback. Boy, he does run into him, and that ball just sails over the head of his intended target. That's more. And Noah Spencer was on coverage. I thought I saw a flag. Okay, there. you were right. I definitely saw a penalty. but Yeah, you got it right. It was that left guard. And, of course, they let the play go. It's fourth down. I understand, but with, with, with the false start, they should have blown the play, blown dead, the play dead, and they right. didn't. Uh, so the play will count. It will be declined, and the Crusaders will have to punt. David Baker is going to punt. He'll, he'll stand there on his own 35-yard line. Jace Barksdale is coming, coming out, out of now. the football game. I like that move. That would let, let you think that I maybe that. the second stringers come in now. I love that move by Coach Trapp, taking his – Exciting playmaker out of this game. No, ch no need to take a chance on an injury here. They'll need him for next week. That punt will hit at the 20 and finally come to rest at about the 10-yard line with 6.47 left to go here in the third quarter. And this clock is running. Remember, we are under the mercy rule. Bruins leading 33 to nothing. Yeah, you know, I expect to see a lot of the, the second stringers, guys like number 36, Bryant Barnes, coming into the game. He's a wide receiver and defensive back, and, yes, I'm doing that for George, coming into the game. It's one, I, it's one I of thought friends. you might he's a, he's a good kid coming in. We'll keep an eye on number 36 right now. Put him on my fantasy team. Like in the flex? Yeah, the flex spot so for let's, sure, let's yeah. Let's see what they do. The Bruins, that's still the first-team offense. Though so I do see Noah Spencer coming in at wide receiver here. Have we seen that this year? Pettigrew from the gun, gift to Finch straight up the middle, bounces back, cuts across the mid, cuts across the middle of the field, still on his feet, and finally comes to rest about the 15, a pickup of five there on first down. Yeah, no one runs harder than Finch there. Just when you think you got him down, he falls forward for another yard. Uh, positive solid yards up the middle every single time. Oh, Great boy, block in there block. by Seals. Raleigh Seals. Well, he's had a good hard. game tonight. Raleigh Seals has had a really good game tonight. Second and five for the Bruins from their own 15-yard line. Bar still coming over to the left slot. Here is the give to Finch off of right tackle. First down and much, much more. Still on his feet. It's a sideline race. 45-50, 45-40, 30-25. -40, Forget about it. That is going to be an 85-yard Garrett plumbing and heating touchdown. The third for Kevin Finch tonight and the third of 35 yards or more for number 31. And watch right here on the replay. When he gets to the 45-yard line, the USJ 45-yard line, he has open space. He's got somebody chasing him down the sideline. He hits another gear. Look at Finch right here hitting this gear just about now and outruns every single Crusader. you got four or five chasing them. It's not going to matter. Finch has got a gear that not everybody uh, has. He gets a block from Rory Jones right about the 25-yard line and does the rest. That is Sykes with the extra point. It is... Is good, and your score with 4.25 left to go here in the third quarter is USJ 40 and FACS Nothing on Worthy Road Studios. It's time for the fourth annual Lifeline Car Giveaway. 
And Joe Mahan Ford is proud to donate a car again this year. Give blood with Lifeline between Memorial Day and Labor Day for a chance to win a 2019 Ford EcoSport. Join Lifeline. And Joe Mahan Ford and give blood this summer. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Welcome back to Cordova, Tennessee. Just under three minutes or four minutes left to go here in the third quarter, and it is all Bruins. If you're just tuning in to the tune of 40 to nothing, Kevin Finch tonight, three touchdowns. Yeah, three touchdowns, running hard. Already Finch over 200 so, yards, too. So by the way. much fun to watch. Yeah, he's all three of his touchdowns have been 30 plus yard carries. That last one we're looking at was probably what 65, 67 yards on the scamper. This last one, 85 yards. 80, this, 85 exactly, 65, yards. 67 plus. So here's the kick, a booming kick, going to be taken at the five yard line, up to the 25, and he is absolutely popped right there. You got that number for that That's truck? That's 24. Anytime you see a hit like that, <laughs> well, first thing you need to assume is it's Brooks <laughs> Jones. Oh. That's his eighth tackle tonight. I know it's on a return, but Brooks is in on everything. Boy, man, you could hear that one from up here. Holy cow. Hit him Bruins. hard. Bruins doing everything right now, leading 40 here. In the late stages of this third quarter, we are under three minutes to go. Look, look at that. They had to bring in extra seating here on the, vis on the visitor section for the Bruins. Look at all these people here. There's a lot a of people very coming real to Cordova. That in less than 45 minutes, you'll be in Fayette County. <laughs> this one is rapidly. What county am I in now? Is this Shelby? Shelby County. All right. That's what I thought. I had that feeling. First and 10 Crusaders from their 25 yard line. Here's a toss sweep to Pennington to the left side, to the wide side. Still on his feet. Still on his feet to midfield. Down the left sideline, punishing Bruin defenders and finally taking out of bounds at the 30. Five yard line. That's a 45 yard run for Jake Pennington. And this is all set up by number nine, Jacoby Moore. There, he's been blocking good uh, all day. He had a, had another one for a first down that was brought back on a hold. No flags on this play. Nice block and really hard run, and the, by far the best offensive play for the Crusaders tonight. Minute 50 left to go here in the third quarter. Well, he said Pennington didn't have the wheels. He's just a power runner. This is by far the it fastest. We saw him run all night long. He said, yeah, tell that dude from USJ I can run. I can run. He's quick. I can do this. Reminds me a lot of me. Matter okay. of fact. Okay. Do we have an injured player on the field? We do, yeah. Is We've got a, a Crusader. Down. No, it's oh. a Crusader down on the far side on the Bruins sideline there. Okay. I don't know if that's Pennington or not. We'll see if we can get a number on that here in just a few minutes. But that Crusader is still down. We'll keep it right here just in case because he could pop up at any second, and hopefully that will be the case. You know, I know you see this score, and it's, it's out of control, and the Bruins are clearly better than FACS. But you see, you, you see a plan here in place for FACS. They have players. That, they've just run into a team who's playing its best football right now. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to convince you that FACS is going on to make the playoffs and you know, win a bunch of games and do all this. They're 500 coming into this football game. Uh, but I, I got to tell you, I, I can I, again, we were told this was a rebuild. This was a rebuilding year. They got a, a second-year coach, and there's a lot to be done here. I think the Bruins are just playing great football right now. They're tough. They're tough for anybody to play with. In that Hardin County game, I mean, all you got to give a team like this that, that's a team that rides on emotional highs is a little bit of hope, and they should have it for the rest of the season. Should be one of the best teams on the schedule that they've already taken down, so nobody, nobody scares them. I would like to see uh, this FACS team play TRA. I wonder what's going to happen there. I'll take FACS in that one. I'll take I, I don't I'll know take that you're FACS wrong. Yeah, I don't know that you're wrong. I really like Shields a lot, uh, and, and I like the arm of, of Josh Wright. So, yeah, I, I, I may ride with you on that one. They, it looks like they have the helmet off of the injured Crusader, uh, but he is still down. So you want to take a break? Say, yeah, let's go ahead and do this uh, because he is still down. So let's go ahead and take this break. Your score with a minute 53 left to go here in the third quarter, USJ 40 and the FACS Crusaders nothing on Worthy Road Studios. For anyone contemplating pre-planning, we can tell you from our experience, it's much easier to make funeral plans and record them now than wait until emotions are running at their highest. 
With pre-planning, you can free your mind and heart from having to make big decisions during a time of grief and instead enjoy the freedom to focus on the memories of a life well lived. And the good news is, is that it is Pennington, and he is up. He's limping a little bit. Looks like he's favoring one of those. I think that's leg, his left maybe. leg. Yeah, is what it appears to me. Yeah, he's definitely the left leg. Tonight. He he's has been playing hard, both sides of the ball. And it almost looks. Does it look like he's trying to grab that hammy from behind right there? Is, is that the case? Because that absolutely could. Because he set sail down that line, and it looks like he may be trying to favor that hamstring just a little bit. The starting tailback for the Crusaders. And of course, they can't plug, blow, uh, get this play going until he is on the sidelines. Crusaders are ready to go. First and 10 from the Bruin 35-yard line. Is that the deepest penetration tonight for the Crusaders? Yo, for sure. Definitely on the ground. They did have that nice pass play to Cook down there. Uh, but, but, yes, on the ground for sure. Right under center. Backs in the eye. Here's a handoff. Tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Great job by that Bruin defense. No no, no uh, gain on that carry. That was number 24, Bryce Miller, the freshman running back, tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, may have even gotten tangled up with one of his own guys there. But the Bruins' uh, defensive line were pushing everybody back. By the way, update from Clyde Abshire Stadium. The Deer knotted up at 14 with Clearbrook. Wow. I'm a little concerned about that. I am too because Clearbrook is terrible. There's your deer. That's a terrible now, now camera they angle. have had a very tough schedule, so we got to give it up to them. <laughs> no one. Chuck's like, what Literally in the world no one do cares. I get? Not, not, not no one. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Crusaders from the Bruin 35 yard line. Bruins leading 40 to nothing right under center. And it's a I don't know what that is. It's a quick hitch out into their left side flat that is taken down. The ball is on the ground. There's a scramble for it, and it looks like the Bruins have come up with it. That is number 48 for the Bruins. I do believe that's the case. If so, that's Paul Jones, Jr., the senior, coming up with that fumble recovery. Yeah, a little screen pass to, to the, I guess, the, the running back coming out of the back there. It was sniffed out very, very quickly. Uh, number 28 in there on the initial contact. That's Baylor Rasback, the sophomore. That ball came loose. The Bruins got it. I do believe that Owen Stonecipher was in on that one as well. The end result is the Bruins get this football from their own 34-yard line with nine seconds left to go here in the third quarter. And we told you we might see some Jackson strap. Well, here he is. He is in the ball game. We are not going to get another snap in the third quarter. After three quarters of play, your score, USJ 40 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Tired of being seen and not heard? At Lifestyle Vision, we believe in patient-centered, quality eye care for West Tennessee, which is why we are locally owned and operated. Come see us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5, or schedule an appointment anytime online. Lifestyle Vision, where compassion meets commitment. Downtown is thriving, and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years. Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Welcome back to Cordova, Tennessee for the Ooh. final 12 minutes of this one. The Bruins well in control of this one, 40 to nothing. And the second team offense now in the game. And so for the most part, it looks like the Bruins have avoided any major injuries tonight for this football game in preparation for next Thursday's regional showdown, which will be for the regional title. Here we go. Jackson Strap from the gun. He gets the ball. It's a handoff. Not much doing that time. It's going to number 29, Titus Taylor. And, you know, we've called Titus Taylor's number plenty this year. The second team running back for the Bruins, and we like him a whole lot. Yeah, Taylor runs the ball hard. Reminds me a lot of Finch, the way that he runs, keeps those legs churning there. No gain on that one. Short loss, actually. Yeah, two-yard loss. 
Well, look at the frame for Jackson Strap. Just well, he nine, looks a, like a quarterback. I mean, he just he just does, and just nine. Great. Unbelievable. Speaking of strap, hits his man in safety valve. Can't bring it in. That's Owen Stone Cipher. Had a little something in the wide side flat, bobbled it, and couldn't hold on to it. Yeah, just a drop there. That's that's going to happen every now and again. Good looking pass there. Uh, good touch by strap. That's something I have noticed uh, the times that we've seen him throw. A lot of times when he's in, they're handing the ball off and running it. But when he does put the ball in the air, he has really nice touch. Third down, and we'll call it 11 for the Bruins. 11 minutes left to go in this contest. Don't forget tonight on Newstalk 101.5 FM, Bryce Mott will take you all the way to 10 o'clock with the postgame show. And, boy, he just gets beat better each and every week. Here we go. Strap from the gun. Swing out to the flat. Hits Taylor at the 20, 25, 40. And all the way up to the 47-yard line, he just accelerates and picks up about 15 yards. Man, Titus Taylor, quick as a hiccup, just got that hit to just boom, gone down that left side. Enough for a Thompson and Smith. First down all the way up to the Bruin, 47-yard line. Wow. Who does he remind you of with that running? Kevin Finch. I mean, it's isn't it weird? It's is I that mean, the it, right answer? Yeah, it's definitely it's Kevin Finch. I mean, these guys. And I know it's good coaching and stuff. You know, keep your legs moving. They both hear the same thing in practice all day, every day. But he's fun to watch too. Really is, and boy, you know, and I love this off this the second team offense getting the opportunity because you never know. Any of these guys are a snap away from being needed. Christian Melton tonight. No doubt about it. Great call. Here's Titus Taylor with the handoff around the left side, cutting back to the midfield, makes a man miss. Now taken down from behind, but not until he picks up about seven yards into Crusader territory down to the 46-yard line. Patient, patient run that time by Taylor. It really was. And, and look at USJ, these second stringers here off the ball, still getting the good blocks downfield, still looking for somebody to hit, and you caught it. Very patient running, putting his hand on, on the lead blocker in front of him there is Taylor. It's so hard for me to not say Finch. I'm going to keep looking down at it. Second and three for this Bruin offense. 9-17 left to go in this football game. Three wide receiver set. Taylor flanking strap, strap with the snap, looking for his man. Incomplete intended at the 40-yard line. See if you can get that number. That's number five. That's going to be Noah Spencer. Incomplete on the play. Third down and three for your USJ Bruins from the Crusader 45-yard line. You know, as this pass sets up here, I thought it was blocked initially. It may have been sure. – it, it, it landed low. It may have been misdirected. Uh, it's, it's far side of the field for us to see. may have been misdirected and knocked down. That may be why it landed at the feet. Third and three for the Bruins. Here's Strap with the handoff to Taylor straight at the middle. First down. It should be. It's going to be right at the sticks. And should be just enough for a Thompson and Smith first down. Depends on where they get the spot. And should be just enough. It is, and it is, a Thompson and Smith first down for Titus Taylor. Yeah, 8-16, 8-14 now on the clock as it ticks down still with our running clock so far in the second half. Boy, I love this valuable experience. I was saying just like a minute ago, and, and for Jackson Strap, and for Jackson Strap as well. First and 10 for the Bruins from the 42-yard line. Strapped to the air, complete down to the 38-yard line. And finally taken out of bounds, Noah Spencer at the 37-yard line. That's going to be good for a gain of about five yards on first down. We'll call it second and five for the Bruins. Yeah, went back to the same play here they had just two plays ago. Spencer's good for that. When that ball's not tipped, that's a five-yard gain. Strap from the gun. Taylor to his right. It's a handoff to Taylor. He falls forward for a gain of about two yards to the 35, setting up uh, third and three for the Bruins. Is that a horn? Have they been playing that all night? That that horn? Yeah. No. Oh, okay. I was like, where did no. this come from? Okay. I would have I would have worn tired of that long time. <laughs> I'm, I'm say, I've heard it twice now, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm good. I was excuse me. <laughs> yeah, we're good. But which button does that? I'll let you tear it up like you did the board at the studio. I know how to run the board. Congrats. Third and three. Here's Taylor straight up the middle, bouncing back. Beautiful little Barry Sanders move, still on his feet, takes a huge hit, keeps on going, and finally down around the 28-yard line. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Titus Taylor may be the second string running back, but you wouldn't know it. No, he could play. He'd be just about anybody else's first string running back. Look at him. Like you said, quick as a hiccup, hard to get down is Taylor Dragon. Four Crusaders, an extra two and a half yards before finally being brought down to the ground. Yeah, that is a Thompson and Smith first down. And the Bruins on the move, leading 40 to nothing down to the 25-yard line. Here's Taylor once again. There's a penalty still on his feet. Wow, a joystick move. Holy cow, the ball comes loose. And we'll see who has it. There is a flag on the play. Yeah, there was a flag early. FACS comes up with the football. Let's see what the penalty is here. The offense has already gone off the field for the Bruins. They, they clearly know something that we're all about to find out. That's going to be a false start, false start on the Bruins. for the Bruins. That penalty is declined, and the Crusaders will take over. Yeah, let's let's see the replay here. See if we can see the false. I want to see the replay for yeah. the, the for the way. I know he's got to hold on to the football, but holy cow! Look at these crazy video game type of moves by Titus Taylor. He's strung out, nowhere to go. Breaks that tackle, cuts back, makes another man miss, splits defenders, but then loses the football when he's hit from behind. Pops up in the air, and FACS gets the football. But look at those moves in space. Wouldn't you normally blow the play dead on a false start? I might. I mean, it's the second time tonight. It hasn't happened. They love to play, play out. I'm all right then, with it. Yeah, no, I'm good. I'm just, I'm just asking. I didn't know. Four fifty three left to go in this football game. The ball is on the turf, and Wright falls on it. Back at his own 19-yard line. That's going to be a loss of about six yards for the Crusaders on first down, setting up second and 16 with 4:43 left to go in this football game. Yeah, Paul Jones there almost coming up with the fumble uh, on, on that play, but he just walked uh, through that offensive line. The Crusaders have called a timeout with 4.43 left to go in the game. Your score, the Bruins 40 and FACS nothing on Worthy Road Studios. Hey, this is Chuck Walker with Southeastern Termite and Pest Control. If you live in West Tennessee, you have a need for the services we offer. We treat for all types of pests, including bed bugs, brown recluse spiders, and other hard-to-treat pests. You don't have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to encapsulate a crawl space. Give us a call to hear how to achieve the same thing and save thousands. Southeastern Termite and Pest Control can handle all of your termite and pest control needs, wood fungus and moisture barriers, real estate closing letters, and so much more. Southeastern, 731-660. 1052. They're hyping the Dirty Dover tonight. <laughs> Man, they, they are, baby. It. How about you? I don't know if they're talking to me or not, but I'd scream. What do you call it when you do the Guadalajara or whatever? What's a it called? Grito? A grito. Whatever. The only person I've ever heard say grito in an Italian accent. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Sopranos. What can I say? Uh, me too. Me too, Chuck. I certainly understand. Here we go. Second and 16 for the Crusaders from their own 19-yard line. There's a new quarterback in the game. We'll get you that name in just a second. Trying to string it out, but nothing doing. Taken down by, well, Titus Taylor. And by number 15, that's Ben Melton. But we do have a flag on the play, and it occurred right there around the tackle. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, was he, did he whistle a dead before he tackled him? I'm not sure what that could have been here. Whistle a dead before he tackled him? Personal foul. That's another. That's like the third face Man, mask. That's a so, lot of face masks. You know, hey, I thought you know, he was out of bounds, and maybe then you know he completed the oh, tackle. Okay, Sometimes yeah. they'll flag that when he was out. You know they whistle the play dead. You know complete the tackle. They'll make, flag you on that. Grayson Hatfield is the quarterback in the game for FACS. Now on that carry was Eric Jeter, not Derek Jeter, but Eric Jeter, the sophomore running back. I see you working there, parents. I like that. Just under four minutes left to go in this football game. Hatfield under center for the Crusaders. Handing off once again to Jeter. Spinning around still on his feet and taken down rudely by a host of Bruin defenders at their own 40-yard line. The Crusaders now face third and we'll call it about eight. Yeah, Owen Stonecipher in there with a host of other Bruins to to make this tackle here. Not a lot working tonight on the ground. They've had a couple of big plays, but by and large, you're looking at losses or at best one to two yard gains for the Crusaders. Happy to report that the deer are now pulling away, it's Chuck. Amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's, I'm pulling, I'm pulling away, My interest sir. is pulling away from the deer. <laughs> I'm, what's I'll, other worry, I'll reel it back in. <laughs> Clearbrook 
Here's the toss sweep to the wide side. That's Jeter. Nice little stutter step move and taken down after about a four-yard carry. That's going to set up fourth down from the 44-yard line. Got to believe Crusaders go for it here because there's absolutely no reason not to. Yeah, no, not a lot of time. Yeah, you're not getting the, the ball back if you don't. You might as well keep playing hard. You got two downs to get four yards. Again, we are six days away from the big game, y'all. I know. I mean, we can go ahead and call this one. I feel pretty confident. But, boy, next Thursday, it is on at Carlock Nissan Stadium. Get there early. Here's a handoff straight up the middle. Jeter, they'll say it's third down, so it was third down just a second ago. So, a little extracurricular there at the end is going to cost somebody. It might be the Bruins. I'm not sure here. Yeah, Ben Melton with the, with the tackle there for the Bruins. Not sure what happened. Did see the flag come in. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like a high step, too. I didn't know what that was. If you say the team with most points, I'm, I'm – Paul, Paul Schultz I'll is going to make a prediction. I right here on He's going to make a prediction, guys. Paul Schultz, who, who covers both schools through Worthy Road Studios, has just announced his winner for next Thursday night's matchup. And who do you think it will be, Paul? Worthy Road Studios. Worthy Road Studios. Well, you're welcome. I appreciate your friendship too, Paul. Well, you know, there there is another broadcast team involved with Worthy Road Studio in that game next week. Are you Joe still going to make Dave. them call it behind the fence like you said you were, Paul? The lies are mounting up. Here's a fullback dot. Whoa! Whoa! Rudely. Wow. That bread truck was named. Let me see. Let me that get had that. had to be a stone cipher, yeah. right? No, that was Carson Moore. Carson Holy Moore. Cow. Well, Carson Moore. Of course it could be Carson Moore. That's another freshman. That's your man. I've watched it. Uh, right? I've watched it with Look my here. own Watch eyes. This. He what? gets 315 pounds up like it is no problem. It's the strongest kid on this field because he's a freshman. Four years from now, I expect him to be driving here. The whole bus. Boy, that's like one of the wrestling, one of those steer that time. Holy like Sid cow. Vicious out there. Arson Moore, here's the toss sweep. Fumbled, picked up by USJ at the 50, the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, and it is a Bruin touchdown. I do believe that's Paul Jones Jr. on the fumble recovery for the Garrett Plumbing and Heating touchdown. Holy cow. What are you so confounded no, by? No, I, I didn't. I didn't know he was a junior. That was Paul Jones there. Huge play for him. Well, that says Paul Jones. It does. Jr., it does so. in mind. I said I didn't know he was a junior. I was going to put a take a pin out That's and make a, a note. Fifty-three yard fumble recovery to the house. Everything working for the Bruins wow. tonight. Boy, that second team defense, stingy, baby. They look a whole lot like that first team defense, and they cash in with a 53-yard fumble recovery for a touchdown by Paul Jones, Jr., and that is it now. I don't even think they're going to bother to kick the extra point. Did they kick it? I didn't see no, it. No, they didn't kick it. Yeah, they did They're didn't. good. So that's going to do it. That's going to be the final score of this game. They didn't kick the extra point. If they did, we didn't see it. 46 to nothing, the Bruins improved to 4-1 and one on the season and still undefeated in region play as they get ready to face Jackson Christian, who is undefeated and unde obviously overall and undefeated in region play. So this will be for the region title next week right here on Worthy Road Studios. But your happy final from the Dirty Dova, USJ 46 and FACS nothing. We'll take this break, come back, and put a bow on it live from Cordova, Tennessee on Worthy Road Studios. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. Do you want your smile to say it all? At Elite Dental Care, we'll make you and your family feel comfortable and secure with a variety of services and state of the art care. We offer sedation dentistry that will make your time in the dental chair comfortable and relaxed. Come by and see our newly renovated and expanded office in Jackson or one of our other convenient locations in Trenton or Dyersburg. Trust your smile with Elite Dental Care and let your smile say it all. Football is here. Get touchdown savings at McCoy's Heating and Air. 
Cooler weather is coming. Tackle the season ahead with McCoy's and be comfortable this season. To get your furnace ready, we are now offering one-time cleaning for only $90. Score big! Call McCoy's and schedule your $90 cleaning today. Call 731-668-7492 or visit airmccoy.com. McCoy's Heating and Air, Jackson's most trusted team of technicians. This could be a true story. On October 3rd, a 2003 hatchback struck and killed a deer that goes by the name Buck. I know, right? He now has Buck's head proudly displayed on his living room wall. He tells a different story. I shot it. No, he didn't. And to hide his lie, he took his car to Mitchell's body shop. No, I didn't. Yes, he did. And lucky for him, they made it look good as new. And as for Buck, the story continues. Brooksy's Barn, locally owned and operated for 40 years in Jackson. Huge Southern Buffet at its finest or choose our drive through window service. Look over our beautiful lake and enjoy a great meal. Come on by. We are sure you will enjoy our friendly staff and great selection of food that we have from pork, fish, beef, chicken, not to mention lots of veggies. We also have a fantastic salad bar and a selection of scrumptious desserts. Y'all come. Serving the Jackson area for over 20 years, Carlock Nissan and Carlock Prestige, the name you can count on. Carlock Automotive, Van Drive, Jackson. Downtown is thriving and the Blacksmith Restaurant is leading the pack. From the rustic dining room to the unmatched patio, Eating local with family is what we're about. Live local, eat local, relax local. Turn to the experts. Since 1955, Garrett Plumbing and Heating has been the leader in plumbing, heating, and air conditioning service and installation for West Tennessee. A proud supporter of USJ Bruin Athletics, we are your local carrier factory authorized dealer. Call Garrett Plumbing and Heating, 668-3339, for all of your plumbing, heating, and air needs. If you work outside or in a facility with no AC, or you're just struggling with this year's heat wave, it can really take a toll on your body and health. At Live Hydration Drip Spa, we can help you recover with our Beat the Heat special for only $59. Call or visit us online today to set your appointment. Championship DNA. That's what you find at Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. A full line of new Chevrolets plus West Tennessee's largest used car inventory. State of the art service work and pre approved auto loans online at JonesChevroletHumboldt.com. Shop with a winner. Jones Chevrolet at Three Way. And welcome back to Cordova, Tennessee, where it has all gone final here tonight. And it was all Bruins from the kickoff 46 to nothing. This game did not start off great as the Bruins won the toss. Elected to receive. FACS caught him off guard. Onside kick, they recovered, but it was a three and out, did nothing. And that Bruin defense stood tall all night and pitched their third shutout in five games. This football team has surrendered 36 points all year in five games. They're giving up just a skosh over, what, seven points a game all, all year long. And uh, playing the, teams like Union City. Hardin County. I mean, they've played some tough teams that can score and have the ability to score and still only allowing seven points a game. No one has cracked 20 points on this football team all year. Halfway through it now. That's a whole nother animal come next Thursday night at Kirkland Field as they welcome the undefeated Jackson Christian Eagles, Darby Palmer, and the Eagles. I mean, Cruising tonight. I mean, do I they? say that is the best team? I mean, they've played Hardin County. You know, they, they, who was undefeated at the time. They played a Union City who is now undefeated. Uh, is Jackson Christian coming into this game the best team that they will have faced? I think it's going to be the one of the most difficult matchups only because they're so explosive. They can do it on the ground, and they can do it through the air. And they've got their own secret weapon. They have their own Jace Barksdale, if you will, and Jalen Mosley. And that's that's the only thing. These teams, are these matchups are, are very difficult different, but they're both such dominating yeah. presence in, in, in Region 2A. I mean, it's like you said, whoever wins this wins the region, and possibly 
possibly the state. This this game right here, we can see these two teams match up again. I don't, I don't, I just don't think that's too far fetched. I, I I don't. I think they are that good. And don't forget, they also have their own Kevin Finch named Cam Boyd. Cam Boyd, uh, absolutely, who is quick as anything. But I can't wait. They're to see Their own Pettigrew the and Boykin. I mean, it's the matchup's great. Gage Boykin and that passing game against these defensive backs. Now I don't know the status of Parker Barnes. We'll see if we can find out in regards to that game or the rest of the year. He was not playing tonight. Had a sling on. I uh, didn't play. I thought Christian Melton did a great job. He did a phenomenal uh, job. He tonight. came in, had several tackles in the first half, and they didn't miss a beat defensively. I think FACS crossed midfield maybe two or three times, never got into the red zone, and that Bruin defense, another shutout. And again, boy, there are so many ways we could go in this football game for your MVP, but I think it's got to be Kevin Finch. Three touchdowns, I believe over 200 yards rushing. Really did everything that you need him to do. We talked about that early in the season. They were going to need the running game as the year went on. And, boy, and especially in these last couple of weeks, he has really shown himself to be one of the most effective runners in West Tennessee right now. I felt like the Hardin County game, he really – I mean, probably probably before that, but for me to see him in that Hardin County game and what he did, when there, when there had to be a third and eight or, or a second and eight and you had to get to third and short, he was the guy to do it. His legs just don't stop moving. He's so much fun to watch. You could give game balls all over this field, but I think Finch tonight gets it. Gets it. Yeah, and I think Berkeley Pettigrew had another fantastic football game. Uh, you know, a few personal fouls here that you got to work out, some kinks there, putting the ball on the ground once or twice. But for the most part, this this was such an effective execution of a game plan today, uh, tonight here in Cordova. You go on the road. And, and, and honestly, I wondered, and I totally expected USJ to win this football game, and they did. But i got to tell you, I really thought there might be a little bit of a hangover tonight after that big win over Hardin County, and it never showed up. Uh, they came out. They didn't get the onside kick to and, open and the game. Han- and handled their business. Yeah, they, they missed long. the onside kick, and that was it. So that's going to do it for us here from Cordova, Tennessee. Again, next Friday night, I will be coming to you live from the studio uh, for two hours, and we'll do a pregame and a little red zone for the first half of some of those games that you want to check out. Then I may go out and find me a good game on a, on a Friday night and see what I can find around West Tennessee. Ooh, going to a game at 8 o'clock, trying to get in free. Hey, man, oh, well, that's for certain, right? I'm going to tell my no, I'm going to drop your name if well, I Well, don't worry about that. <laughs> don't you worry about it. So we want to thank all of our great sponsors, uh, of course, the folks for Paul Schulze and his entire team with Early Road Studios, Bryce Mott producing and directing uh, back at Jackson's News Talk 101.5 FM, and he's getting ready to do the postgame show there. He'll take you to 10 o'clock, so call him, 423-8101 or 1-800-304-1015, and help him get to 10 o'clock. He'll give, give him all the latest for what game you saw, uh, some scores, send him in the, some text on the text line as well, and he'll take you to 10 o'clock with the postgame show. Another successful night of Bruins. In football, 2-0 and in the region, and 4-1 and on the season. For one last time, your final score from Cordova, Tennessee, your USJ Bruins, 46, and First Assembly Christian School, nothing. For Chuck Walker, my name is Seabass. Have a great night, everybody.